I'm gonna turn that down a little. Uh, gee. That is... Oh, I can just turn it on or off. I don't really have a choice of high or low. Okay, no. I want the music. I just want it to be a little lower in my headphones, but apparently I don't get to do that, so. I'm gonna hear it blaring. Hopefully you guys aren't gonna be too bothered by it. So I can turn down the stream, so it's okay. Wait, is it blaring because of my volume set? Ah, whatever, it doesn't matter. Anyway, to anyone who's watching this in the future, uh, welcome back in. Um, we just found this dude, which we've been looking for for a while now, hiding in this little safe. You know, spoiler alert, by the way, just... Anyway, finally found this dude, the magician slash scientist, so uh, hopefully... We, uh, we can get some answers from him on what the hell he's been up to. I just hope I can get his voice right. I just remember him being very... I compared him to the Frankenstein butler from the Addams Family, right? Or the Munsters? No, the Munsters, the Frankenstein was the dad, I think. I don't know. You know what I'm talking about, though. Anyway. He's definitely got a very... goth look. <laughs> very steampunkish, actually, with the hand, now that I think about it. Uh, what on earth happened in here? You found me, haven't you? No need to screw me down any further. Everything in here is precisely what it seems. Yeah, well, we'll be giving it a thorough going over, don't you go, Drebber? What fails to click with me is how you were able to locate my workshop that I was not expecting. When I heard whistling from the other room, I knew it was time to bolt. Whistling? Ah, that would have been me. Oh. For some reason, I woke in fine fettle today. No words, just tightly squeezed chips. Clearly, I must have a screw loose, though, as I couldn't remember the combination for the safe another one loose, as I couldn't remember on which piece of furniture I'd written it down. We also found a rope over by the wall? Yes, I had hoped to exit through the skylight, but sadly the rope was too short. So, I then sat about searching for the combination code to open the safe. And burning the incriminating blueprints, don't forget. Regrettably, though, you failed to retrieve the head from the balloon among the rafters. And after that, you hid yourself inside the safe, having first set this parcel ticking. Well, I had no intention of being nailed by the police. Well, you got nailed, sir. Or screwed. I don't know. Whichever one you prefer. He keeps saying screw, and it comes up in red, which usually means it's important, but we'll see. Hey, Norman, how you doing? Welcome in. How was How's your evening going, or your day, or your afternoon? How was your Monday? How was your weekend? What have you been up to? Fill me in, good sir. Uh. Got a death. Got a death with Hatcher, hiding right beside a ticking time bomb. Please, why do you suppose I chose to hide inside the safe? It's no ordinary safe, it's specially designed. A dynamite explosion wouldn't leave a scratch on it. So, in fact, the safe was the only safe place. Ha <laughs> ha, Sholmes! That pun was so good! Sorry. What? I finished this game... Oh, you finished this game over the weekend streaming for eight hours straight. Damn, boy. Well, grats to you for finishing it. Uh, eight hours, though. That's... You did, you did the last two cases in eight hours? That's... That's a lot shorter than I expected. I expected those ones to maybe be longer. Maybe you're just really good at the game. I would believe that too. So, but congratulations on beating the game. Did you enjoy the ending? Like, did it kind of wrap everything up together with a nice bow on top? I'm hoping it does, because if it doesn't, it's going to leave a sour taste in my mouth after that first one. 
Oh, just 60% of the last case? Damn. 60% of the last case took eight hours? That is crazy. Good on you, though, for sitting through it, you know? It was too long? The last one usually is, you know? That's kind of their trademark for Phoenix, right? For Ace Attorney games. Anyway. Precisely. But once you'd climbed inside, you wouldn't have been able to get out again. I invite you to look more closely. The safe is fitted with a handle on the inside to allow the door to be unlocked from within. Oh, so it is. I had always intended to blow this place to smithers in any case. I just wasn't expecting uninvited guests to come along and screw up my plans. Do you, do you mean to say you were planning to blow us all up? Well, I predicted everything except two moments. Damn, good for you, dude. That's a lot of foresight. Or just paying attention. I don't know. I failed to pay attention a lot, so things usually catch me by surprise, but... I did not guess right why Professor was killed. I am still in the dark about who that guy is exactly. I mean, I'm assuming it's supposed to be like Moriarty, but... I don't... I'm not sure yet. Anyway. No, no, that was unforeseen. What do you mean? Most people run, you see, when they see a ticking time bomb at their feet. Ah. I calculated the time required for retreat to a safe distance and set the device accordingly. But your seemingly endless discourse in here threw a spanner in the works. Is something wrong, Gregson? Do I have something on my face besides the usual eyes, ears, nose, and mouth? Huh. Because he made us stay while he did do stuff. It was funny. That was very amusing. Um, but I guess my main question then, Norman, is just... Uh, did it feel good? Like, when you figured everything out and everything came together, like... Did it feel resolved? Which is funny, because that's the title of the game, Resolved. I'm really hoping everything gets resolved. But, uh, I don't know yet. I'm just looking for, like, a yes or a no. No spoilers. Just that you enjoyed it, you know? I'm hoping you did. God, my forehead is fucking huge. <laughs> for someone who's really dumb, I have a big head. Uh, I think we have a fairly good idea of what's been going on here, man. But what about the two incidents you've evidently been involved in recently? Professor Harebrain's instantaneous kinesis experiment at the Great Exhibition... And the waxwork model you stole, which this head belongs to. That's no ordinary head, you know. That's the head of the professor. Clad in a mask with a lock so strong, I'm unable to open it safely to reveal the killer's identity. I've been considering carrying it around as protection. That's enough! Oh, it's her. I forgot what voice I gave her now, too. Damn. What's going on here, Gregson? I'm sure you're aware that I have sole jurisdiction to investigate here. Oh, uh, um, yes, well. Dr. Scythe again. So the forensic investigation team are here. And you know full well this engineer is a key witness. Why are you allowing this lawyer access to him? If Lord Strongheart knows of this, you'd be finished. He's going to France anyway. What does he care? Anyway, sorry. Um, well, as I said, I predicted everything 10 hours before the game end. It was as I thought almost. And other thing that I was not guessed right, so a spoiler. Yeah, but you're not telling me if you liked it. Does that mean you didn't like it? Or did you like it? Like, was it... <laughs> did you like being right? I guess that's the main question here. I feel like the answer should be yes, but... Usually when my prediction is better than what actually happened, I say that the game is bad. Well, if you predicted it correctly, does that still mean it's bad? Or does... Here it was exactly as I thought, so it is okay. 
All right, fair enough. It is okay. I can take that. That's a, that's an answer there. You lot, leave at once. My dear madam, there's no need for such a threatening tone, I assure you. After all, there's no way to greet an old acquaintance, is it, Dr. Scythe? Hello, Shoms. Mr. Shoms knows Dr. Scythe? He knows everyone, apparently, but that's not surprising. If it's protecting the machine next door that's causing such a sour expression on your face, you are quite misguided. It's really nothing more than a shell. You... Get out! But of course, we'll show ourselves the door. I see you haven't softened at all. Hey, Venom, how you doing? Welcome in. Oh, it says you're... What is it? Listening... Oh, listen... Okay. So you can hear me, you just can't see it. Okay, that's cool. But hey, well, Venom, welcome in. How you doing? How's your day? How's your weekend? How's everything going with you? Please fill me in on what you've been up to. Sometimes the game plot is better than I think, but it is very rare. Okay. Well, that means that there's a few good moments to, to keep an eye out for. As for me, I'm not really trying to make too many predictions. I'm just trying to let the game kind of guide me to where it wants me to go. But we'll see how that goes in the long run. But, uh, but yeah, how you doing, Venom? X Gamer, welcome in, X Gamer. As far as I'm concerned, the game's conclusion was nothing short of amazing. If you've enjoyed the game's contents up to this point, then I believe that you'll enjoy the rest of it even more so. Um, I have been enjoying the game so far, absolutely. I won't say I'm not. Um, it is leaving, like, a bunch of questions and loose threads, but... Again, I'm assuming the next two chapters I go through are going to start maybe piecing a little bit together. Maybe not the next one. Maybe that one's going to throw even more questions. But the last one being significantly longer, I'm expecting it to, to answer all those things. Hopefully. We'll see. Oh, I am playing Aria of Sorrow right now, so I'm just listening. Okay, that's cool. I appreciate you stopping by while you're playing games. That's totally fine. Uh... Big preach, Venom. Big preach. I just hope uh, I just hope you had a good weekend and a good Monday. I know I hate Mondays personally, although, you know, this one wasn't that bad. But, you know, still a Monday. And I'm starting late, too, which is unfortunate. But, you know, it is what it is. I had some errands to do. Errands to do. Errands to run. Things to do. I don't freaking know what I'm trying to say. But, yeah. Mr. Naruhodo. Uh, yeah? It would appear that our delightfully entertaining investigations have run their course for today. But, but Mr. Sholmes... Let us leave this place in the Doctor's capable hands. I said get out, now, all of you! Your presence here is not required either, Gregson. Whoops, that was British. Ah, oh, whatever. Understood. But I'll just say the one thing before I head off. If it wasn't for this lawyer and his companions, we'd never have found this place, and the whole workshop would have been blown to bits. There was a time bomb set in here that this lot disarmed. Inspector. Kuh, kuh, kuh. Something to give you a chuckle, Isaac. Drum up. Ah, oh, so sorry. Didn't mean to offend. You're quite right, of course. You did disarm the time bomb, didn't you? Yes, you did disarm that one. Eh? My god, I can't do Gina. She is my kryptonite. Eh? What are you... Uh, it's Gina, too. I don't know why I said Gina. Everyone knows her name's Gina. That one? Yeah, you mean... Cook, cook, cook. How many time bombs this guy got? Oh. Oh dear. It was an hour later that we heard the news of the enormous explosion that ripped through the experimentation stage at the Great Exhibition. 
Professor Harebrain's invention and all its secrets were blown away forever. <laughs> to be continued. All right, everyone. Well, that was a great stream. Thank you all for coming. I'm going to head out now. Bye. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, we're going to save it. Do I look like a dummy? All right. Trial part three. Hey, Fern, welcome on in. How you doing today, sir? How's your evening going? I know that work sucked for you today, and I hope whatever you're doing is relieving stress and making it better, you know? Uh, well, I need to go. Got a busy day tomorrow, so I'll need my rest. Have a good night. Well, thank you so much for dropping by, X-Gamer. I appreciate you saying hi and for just reassuring that, you know, if I've been enjoying it, I'm going to enjoy the rest. So thank you, Big Parish. Uh, I hope you get some rest, and I hope that your day goes well tomorrow, sir. Uh, I'm doing better. I got a nosebleed after work, too, but it's over now. God hates me. Oh, man. I'm sorry if it feels like God hates you. I don't think he does, but... You know, some days are rougher than others, and I get that. Um, if it makes you feel any better, uh, I actually got my first nosebleed in my whole life last Sunday, which was really trippy, because, like, I've never had one before, so when my nose started just, like, running i was like just wiping it and not paying attention uh and then i went to go uh, open the fridge and i saw like all the red on my hand i was like what the fuck is this oh my god <laughs> i freaked out a little bit but you know in the end i have roommates that all have dealt with it before so they were just like yeah take a tissue shove it up there just wait i was like all right cool i can do that nosebleeds are scary i had them when i had the virus last year Really? Like, excessively when you had the virus? That's crazy. I caught COVID, and it was just, like, a nasty week of the flu, but... No nosebleeds. Yeah, first time. Last week. It was nuts. Damn. Well, hopefully you don't catch it again and go through that experience... I want to just die at that point. Still do, but yeah, it was awful. I'm sorry, bud. If there's anything like I can do to help you out, just you know, just let me know. I know, I know that sometimes times get real difficult. So, you know, shout out for you, Fern, for sticking through it. <laughs> sometimes it's good just to be acknowledged that it's okay to survive. Uh, 24th, October, 9-11 a.m., the Old Bailey Defendant's Antechamber. Good morning to you, Mr. Narahodo! Uh, good morning, Professor. Ready for today's proceedings? I hope so. I should be. Even I, with nothing left to... Good morning, my dear fellows. Oh, Mr. Sholmes, you're here. Why, naturally, a true gentleman stands shoulder to shoulder with his friends in battle at all times. Thank you, I really appreciate it. I'll see you later, then. Okay, and he disappears. Cool. Now, Professor, we really need you to remain calm in the courtroom today. Yes, do try your hardest not to enter the witness stand uninvited again. Yes, I will. I, I realize it was a mistake, but I... My dear fellows, I must interject. Sholmes really wants to talk to us today. Um, how's the stream going? It's going good. Just started. 20 minutes in so far. Um, but yeah. Hopefully we're going to get through the rest of this today. Oh god. My nose feels like it's going to run and I hope it's not bleeding. <laughs> that would just be a fucking punch in the crotch, wouldn't it? Talking about nosebleeds and suddenly I start bleeding. Anyway. Uh, but yeah. 20 minutes in. Hopefully we're going to finish this chapter. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to have enough time to move on to the next chapter, depending on how long this one takes, but we're going to see. Maybe. Nah, 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 nah. Anyway. <laughs> but yeah, so far so good. What are you doing in your free time while you're, uh, while you're watching? I know normally when I watch people, I'm usually doing something on the side. But what do you do like, what do you like to do to relieve stress? That's the question here. Oh, you're still here, Mr. Sholmes. What's the matter? Surely you've overlooked some praise, have you not? To be cast in my direction? Hmm? 
Sorry, I don't follow. Must I spell it out? I, the great Herlock Sholmes, the greatest detective of worldwide acclamation, arose at some ungodly hour to be here now. First thing in the morning. A miracle, you must agree. Well, if I must agree, then... As you know, my sleep is quite impregnable. Iris had to employ her full gamut of tactics. She pulled the covers off, shook me, poked both cheeks, punched me, and kicked me from the bed. Then she poured a boiling cup of her latest experimental blend on my face, and at last I was bestirred. Oh my, Iris has been busy. Iris doesn't have it in her to go that far. She's too nice. Ah, I sense the spirit of a fellow scientist, one who re relishes the infinite possibilities of blending tea. I'm the one worthy of praise here, not Iris. This is my victory. I hate it when they do the question marks, because, like, I don't know whose voice I need to do. Um, I'm waiting for my goofiest friend to hop on Fortnite with me. Ah, okay. A good game of Fortnite while lurking. That sounds really relaxing. Well, depending on how you handle Fortnite. I know a bunch of people that used to play Battle Royales, and they take it really seriously. A lot like League of Legends players take their League of Legends really seriously, but... Hopefully you'll be able to play Fortnite and unwind. That's what I'm hoping for. I'm going to keep my fingers crossed for you on that one. Get a nice victory royale for me, will ya? That's the right game, right? Yeah. Fortnite's victory royale. And then... Warzone was Warzone victory. And PUBG was winner, winner, chicken dinner. That's the one I always got confused on. Because it was just like a random, like... Who chose that phrase for winning a game of PUBG? Winner, winner, chicken dinner. I don't know. I never played PUBG. I just know it existed. But anyway, back to the thing. Uh, sorry to cut in. Oh, it's Gregson. He's been acting really odd. Oh, Inspector Gregson, good morning. Gregson, my dear fellow, why the grim expression at this delightfully early hour? Oh, I don't know. Maybe because I've been confronted with a grimmer expression, eh? Dear me, are you going to take that insult lying down, Professor? What? What? I don't know! Poor Professor. Anyway, here's the paperwork you asked for. Uh, what paperwork? Ah, I took the liberty of requesting it yesterday. I have a feeling it may prove e it may prove useful. You wouldn't believe the hoops I had to jump through to get this brought out to the archives. It's the professor's autopsy report. Wait, what? The professor's autopsy report? That... that mass murderers? Who killed five members of the arist aristocracy. He was found guilty in a closed trial ten years ago now. It was all done under wraps. And he was quickly executed soon after the trial. It's all in here. Wow. That seems like an odd thing to have right now, but, uh, okay. I I don't know what to say. Thank you, Inspector. Uh, thank you, and, uh, you sit there and enjoy that thank you while I go look at this, because... Oh, wow. How many of these have I looked at? I've looked at that, I think. There was blood on that camera, I forgot. Uh... Did I check this... There's a little metal plaque here, look. Fostering burgeoning talent for the future of scientific discovery. It seems rather ironic, doesn't it? But clearly Mr. Drebber really was a very talented scientist. Okay. Can I open it? No. Can I get a massage from it? Probably not. Uh, oh. Oh, there's the lock. This lock does look very strong, doesn't it? There's definitely no way you could remove the mask yourself if it was put on you. What a terrible way to treat someone, even a convicted criminal. I know, it's starting to make me livid, actually. Mr. Narahodo, please. I mean, just think about it. Imagine if you had an itch on your cheek all of a sudden. You'd be utterly helpless. That's Narahodo, always focusing on the important facts. Well, yes, that's true. But I'm not sure that warrants quite so much anger. Oh, right. Sorry. Alright. Anything else on this weird-ass mask? Like, 
Why did Trevor really want to keep it? Is that it? That was just... okay. He was... was he trying to, like, figure out the secret identity of the professor by opening the wax sculpture? Because if I had money on what's underneath that mask, it's blank. Unless Madame Tusspell knows more than she's letting on. But we'll think about that later. Let's read this. Condemned prisoner, blank, redacted for confidentiality, pseudonym, The Professor. Death by hanging confirmed at midnight, 17th June. Courtney Stevens. I feel like that's the second time we've heard that name, isn't it? Do I have another document somewhere? Courtney Scythe. So Dr. Scythe's first name is Courtney. I'm assuming. Uh, should the autopsy for Odie Asman. But where did the Stevens come from? Is it the same lady? Did she get married or something? I don't know. Something to keep in mind. Anyway, moving on. Yes, much obliged, Gregson. A slowly lot. The yard are just doing what we can. In the chateau of the great Detective Sholmes, of course. What, is Sholmes going to start crying because he got praise? Well then, Professor Harebrain, this is it. Today we're going to lay all this to rest at last. I wish you the best of luck, Professor. I suppose he'll be in there today, will he? Trevor. Yes, we expect the prosecution to summon him as a witness. I'm still amazed that you managed to find him in just one day. I really owe you both so much. Counsel and the defendant. The trial is about to resume. Kindly make your way into the courtroom at once. So many bailiffs, they are all ro they're all robots. That's, uh, that's all I care. They're just fucking robots. This is it then, the final chapter. Funny, my heart's racing a little. I've not felt this before, actually. This strange foreboding. As if something's going to happen in this trial that I'm not ready for. But I can't let that distract me from the only thing that really matters. Finding the truth. Because we gotta make Cosima Daddy proud. That's right. I call him Cosma Daddy. 24th, October, 9.30 a.m. The Old Bailey Courtroom. In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session again. We resume the public hearing of Albert Harebrain here present who stands accused of murder. Are the counsels for the prosecution and defense ready to proceed? Oh, look who's here. The prosecution is ready, my lord. The defense is ready, my lord. As promised, Lord Van Zeeks has his apprentice with him. His apprentice with memory loss. If I may, Lord Van Zeeks. Yes, my lord. There appears to be someone standing at your side. Ah, yes, my apprentice and assistant. The prosecution believes today's proceedings will see the complexity of this case rise considerably. I therefore instructed my assistant to attend to ensure the smooth running of the trial. And the smooth running of liquid refreshments, by the look of it. The way he holds himself, the way he moves, it couldn't be anyone else. But he's still suffering from amnesia, so there's really nothing we can do at the moment. I know, but, oh, this is so very hard. It would appear the prosecution has done a fine job in responding to the demands of the court made yesterday. I understand you have successfully secured the engineer who disappeared from the scene on the day in question. Yes, my lord. I intend to call him as a witness shortly. 
Very good, very good. Now then, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, who have been chosen at random to represent the will of the people in this courtroom today, are you ready and willing to proceed? Of course, my lord. I'm sure we all understand the importance of doing our civic duty. He's got a big nose. I had to go with it. I don't know. I do so despise deception and deceit. I find it so very wearing. To take a man's life with a conjuring trick. It is against the magician's code, not to mention the law. I prefer conjuring tricks to fill the wrath of God, if you ask me. Um, we had to listen to what's said on both sides to fence, and, um, then settle on one. That's it, isn't it? Why are they letting, like, a seven-year-old kid come to the jury? And he was the one that was asleep in the wax museum, right? Have I... Did I notice that before? Am I just blind to this? Anyway. Wasn't like this in my day. Wasn't like this at all. He just sounds really constipated. But he's old, so... If all parties are ready to proceed, you may begin, Lord Van Zeeks. Before I do, my lord, there is a report I must read to the court. A report for the court. Report for the court. Anyway. Yesterday at the Great Exhibition Grounds, the evidence of primary importance in this case, the Super High Voltage Instantaneous Kinesis Machine, which was installed on the experimentation stage, was deliberately destroyed in an explosion effected by an unknown person or persons. It was what? An explosion? This, this is an art. He's my favorite voice still. I don't know. I don't know why. I just love that so much. Yes, I heard this grave news yesterday. Scotland Yard submitted a report to my office in the evening. I read that the machine was blasted to smithers and the wreckage reduced to ashes in the flames. I have here a photographic print of the scene taken in the wake of the explosion. It shows what little remains of the machine. Hmm, yes, a terrible business. He did it to destroy the evidence, did he? That Enoch Drebber. The court will take this print as evidence, counsel. Post-explosion photograph. I want to look at it. I want to look at it. All right. So, just off the bat, I don't notice anything odd about this, except for this giant hole in the middle, where something could have easily fallen through. Um, but otherwise, everything else seems pretty normal for an explosion, so... Uh, mental note? Got it. I'm gonna forget that mental note, trust me. I do it all the time. Anyway. Late yesterday afternoon. The protection afforded to the machine by the Special Dispensation for Scientific Equipment Act was revoked. However, before a thorough investigation could begin, the invention was obliterated from existence. As such, this will become a very different trial. Huh? Why are you pointing at me? I didn't do it. As it stands now, with no evidence on which to draw meaningful conclusions, the authenticity of the Kinesis machine will remain forever in obscurity. Hmm, indeed. A most unfortunate state of... Uh, he's not British. A most unfortunate state of affairs. There we go. However, one thing remains clear. The victim's death was the result of the actions of the accused. Of that we can be certain. For it was the accused himself who was operating the machine and who ultimately caused its loss of control. Objection. As Lord Van Zeeks rightly says, this is a very different trial now. Hmm? The accused accepts responsibility for his part in the events that transpired. He acknowledges that Mr. Asmund died as a result of the accident caused by his machine's malfunction. However, unbeknownst to the professor, he was being deliberately deceived by a pair of very clever fraudsters. Names, counsel, if you please. The engineer, Mr. Enoch Drebber, and the victim himself, Mr. Odie Asmund. Hello, that's... Oh, hey, Maple, how you doing? I knew I recognized that honk from somewhere, but it's been a while since I've heard it. How have you been, Maple? How's everything? 
you got to catch me back up on what you've been up to. You've been gone for a while. How how's the family life? How's the job search? I mean, how's everything? You got you got to fill me in. But I hope you've been doing well. Honestly, <laughs> it's good to see you. Um, so what exactly were these two men up to behind the defendant's back? The defense intends to expose that information, thus establishing the unequivocal innocence of the defendant. Point. 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 Thank you, counsels. The positions of the prosecution and defense have been clearly stated. Lord Van Zeeks, summon your first witness, please. At once, my lord. The prosecution calls the engineer, Mr. Enoch Drebber, to the stand. Uh, so you've been doing well. That's good, Maple. <laughs> also, welcome in Mochi. Good to see you as well. You also have to catch me up on how you've been with your new uh, boyfriend. I want to know how everything's going. You got to tell me. You got to fill me in. Um, but to answer your question, Maple, I've been all right. Oh, God. No, no, no. Stop, 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 stop. T. Okay. Um, but yeah, I've been all right. You know, same old, same old, not much new, working, uh, hanging out with friends, uh, you know, streaming when I can, although work's been kind of hectic lately, which has been really unfortunate, but, you know, we do what we can to survive. Um, I'm glad you guys missed each other so much. <laughs> But it's okay. I understand new jobs are really difficult. They like they can be difficult. You got to get used to them. You got to get into a new pattern, a new routine. Um, but have you been adjusting well, Maple? Like, what is this new job? Like, you don't have to tell me, obviously, if you don't want to. But um, whatever it is, I hope that you're, you know, enjoying it a lot better than the last one, which I know was terrible. I did not like that company. That that old one. That was a terrible job. I've got a dad now. You should probably meet him before you start calling him that, but it's 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 nice positive thinking like that that I appreciate. So, but yes, I, I need to hear about this as well. Uh, state your name and occupation for the court. Name Enoch Drebber. Occupation? Hard to pin down, I would say. See that black monocle? Yes. Why do I feel as though I've seen it somewhere before? Oh, you too? I heard exactly the same thing in my talk. Your file indicates that you are currently being investigated in connection with another case. The theft of a waxwork model. Is it? A most extraordinary sounding business. But that has no bearing on this trial, I assure you. Cleave it from your mind. You're familiar with the public experiment carried out at the Great Exhibition some days ago. The accused super high voltage instantaneous kinesis demonstration. Yes, you could say that. I am aware of it. Why is like every other word out of this guy's mouth highlighted red? Such a sus thing. And he's doing his little dance, but. There was a terrible accident, wasn't there? It was you, Mr. Drever, who constructed the vast machine used in the experiment. Or so our investigations indicate. Can you confirm your involvement? Yes, I constructed it in precise accordance with the blueprints, but that's all. Then the court would be very interested to hear your thoughts about the machine, I'm sure. An amazing device, if you ask me. The pinnacle of modern science, making instantaneous kinesis a reality at last. What? Good, good gracious, do you mean to say that the experiment was bona fide? Is that your belief, sir? Well, I did his voice wrong, I apologize. That was terrible. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway. I'm throwing my bestie under many buses. What are you doing to your bestie, Mochi? That's not a nice thing to do to besties. 
Sorry I was la lagging and didn't hear what you said. Didn't hear what I said or didn't hear what Mochi said? I'm staying at my besties for a few days. That's cool. Why are you staying at your friends? Oh, what I said? Oh, I was just saying that, you know, whatever new job you have, it's understandable to be busy. Because, you know, it's a whole new routine. It's a whole new group of people. It's a lot of stuff. But I hope that whatever it is, you're getting used to it. And that it's way better than your old job. Because we all know how terrible your old job was. They wouldn't even pay you on time. That's frustrating. Anyway. I could go on a rant for a while about that, but I'm not going to. I just want to hear how this new job is, how you're doing, and why Mochi's staying at her besties for a few days. Also kind of curious. Um, yes, that is very much my belief. Such a waste that it blew up. Objection. But we've already established the machine was nothing more than a prop for an elaborate conjuring trick. Objection. You've established nothing of the sort. All that was shown during yesterday's proceedings is that the same outcome could have been produced by means of staged trickery. The defense merely proposed a method and demonstrated its feasibility, nothing more. But, but, I like big butts. Ah. Uh, anyway, we've procrastinated long enough, I feel. Witness, you will now give your formal testimony about the machine that you constructed for the purpose of the demonstration at the Great Exhibition. Understood. Witness testimony, the kinesis machine. Bah. Anyway. Um, yeah, my new job is way better now. Good, good. I'm glad to hear that, Maple. And how long have you been at this new job now? Because I feel like I haven't seen you in months. So, <laughs> uh, I'm just wondering how long you've been working there. I'm staying at my boyfriend's because they don't know. Ah, I see what you mean. Staying at your besties. Got it. That's cool, though. I'm glad that you guys are getting along that well. Very cool. Um, a lot of my colleagues here are really nice and offer help when needed, and it has a more friendly environment that I can actually learn. Almost a month. Okay, very cool. A month is a great amount of time. You should be adapting very well by now. And I'm glad that you really enjoy the people and the environment and all that. That's good. Much healthier than the last place you were at. But good. I'm happy for you, Maple. I'm so excited. I'm so glad you dropped by to, to update us on that. Because, you know, the way things ended before, like, oof. Um, It's so weird. We haven't even been dating a week and we are already so comfy. He snores as loud as you, though. Ah, uh, that's a thing of the past, though. I got my CPAP machine. No snoring anymore. I am silent as a... Uh, Tiger. I don't know. What's something that's silent? Mime. Silent as a mime. There you go. I mean, it sucks because it's like... The mask itself is... Like, it's it's pressed against my nose really hard every night. And then those areas where it's really pressed against my skin... It's like causing zits to appear and whatnot. And it's just like... Ugh. Like, I clean it, but it's still, like, my skin gets so oily when I sleep and shit, so. I don't know. It's frustrating, but the snoring is gone. And the sleep is better, I think. I think I haven't been napping as much, which is good. It's a good sign. But uh, but I'm glad that your guys' snoring cancels each other out. That's good. <laughs> I met the young professor approximately one year ago through Mr. Asman's introduction. He provided me with the blueprints, and I constructed the machine to his precise specifications. It was no trick. If the whole show was a fraud, it would have required a body double. Tell me, did the victim have a twin? All the spectators saw the birdcage appear above their heads, and then crash head first into the crystal tower. A terrible accident, I grant you. Perhaps the science on which the machine was built was flawed somehow. Hairbrain, please don't jump in. I feel like he's about to jump in. A, a body double? That goes without saying, surely. To give the impression that something has moved when in reality it hasn't. It's a basic conjuring principle. The deception cannot be achieved without substituting the original with a fake at some point in the performance. 
Would I be right in saying you haven't managed to establish anything along those lines? Ugh. Incidentally, the prosecution has already confirmed that Mr. Asman had no twin siblings. Hmm. It's my understanding that this witness is well-versed in conjuring artfulness. But such talents do not indicate that he was actually able to accomplish what he claims. Namely, the construction of what, by all accounts, must have been an extremely complex scientific machine. Whatever do you mean? Yesterday's proceedings brought th the true nature of your past exploits to light, Mr. Drever. Indeed it did, my lord. As a swindler who preys on innocent scientists to elicit government grant money through conjuring know-how. Yes, it's true that I possess considerable knowledge of stage magic. But crucially, my scientific knowledge more than matches that of any academic in the field. Investigation of the witness's workshop attests to that claim, my lord. As evidence, the police found this Royal Society trophy for young talent and science there. Anyway, uh... Let me catch up. Thinking about asking him to get tested... He may have what you have. Sleep apnea? Uh, that's probably a good idea. Um, cause sleep apnea, like, uh, not only is does it cause trouble while sleeping, but like, it's such a low quality of sleep apparently that like, one of the main symptoms of it is to feel fatigued throughout the day. So, even if you do get like a full night's sleep because you're suffering from sleep apnea, you're gonna be tired throughout the day regardless. Like. Before I started using my machine, I was taking naps at, like, 1 o'clock every afternoon because I just could not stay awake. But that's because my sleep was so bad. So, yeah, I if, if you think he might have it, it's uh, probably a good idea to get tested and get it treated so that he can start, like, actually getting some good sleep, you know? Um, Maple says, I've been learning a lot and have been developing my skills and communication skills. Very cool. Very good. It's always important to develop good communication skills if you're working in an office environment where everyone's like like a, a multi-person team project. Always good to be able to communicate. Like, I'm not the smartest cookie, but I feel like eyes can talk good sometimes, you know? <laughs> but good, I'm very proud of you, Maple. Um, he lives with his nan and she's awesome. She said I can stay over whenever I like. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, I uh, after I graduated uh, high school and moved back to to Los Angeles here, um, I also lived with my grandma for a bit, and she was very lax about you know having people over. I had friends over to from like all over the place to whenever they wanted to like visit LA. It was nice. It was very cool. I miss her. She passed away like three years ago, I think. It's been a while, but she was an angel. I love her. R.I.P. Grandma. Um, people said, when I went to the interview, they asked me questions and then asked me to come into work the next day. I was really happy because it was the very first time I passed an interview. Congratulations. Props to Maple. They were so impressed with your interview, they were actually like, can you start as soon as possible? Like, that is a great sign. I mean... It could also be a sign of desperation on their part, but from how positively you're telling me about this place, I'm going to assume they just loved you. So, congratulations, Maple. I am very proud of you as well. Realizing how much I love intimacy, cuddles, and affection. <laughs> well, I think we all knew that. But yeah, yeah, he sleeps longer than I do. I sleep eight hours. Yep. Sometimes sleep apnea can do that. I mean, well, I don't know if that's sleep apnea. I just naturally, like... If I don't get up as soon as I need to, and I'm just, like, roll over, the grogginess will knock me out immediately again, and then I'll sleep for God knows how much longer. I don't know if that's a sleep apnea thing, though, or if it's just me being really good at going to sleep. <laughs> I practice a lot for that. Especially in high school. But I don't recommend that for anyone watching. <laughs> Aw, and Venom's congratulating too. Thanks, Venom. Maple deserves it. Um, yes, that's true. We spotted it there ourselves. If a hypothesis is sound, it can always be forged into a physical manifestation with sufficient skill. 
though I may have sold the secrets of some deceptive wiles to sniveling, talentless scientists in the past. Would, would you therefore assert that the explosion of the machine was... An unfortunate accident. Or, of course, a deliberate act of murder carried out by misuse of the science. Counsel for the defense, your cross-examination, please. Yes, my lord. Cross-examination, the kinesis machine. Um, he falls asleep so fast, too, and immediately starts snoring. Oh, man. I can relate to that, but... Uh, yeah, definitely have him go get that checked out if he if he can. It's just a honestly they mailed me like a kit. It was just a quick sleep study, like one use kind of thing. You just link it to your phone via Bluetooth, and then um, take the test, and it sends it to the company to get it checked. All you got to do is like put a sticky on your heart, and then put a pulse thingy on your finger, and yeah, it's easy. Um. Sorry, I gotta go now. I gotta take a nap so I have energy for, me for the meeting that we have later. I'll try to stop by as much as I can. No worries, Maple. Uh, I appreciate you stopping by. It's It was a pleasure to talk to you again. I hope everything continues to go well for you. Um, but, uh, but yeah, obviously stop by if you can. But if you can't, that's okay too. It's okay to be busy. We will still be here uh, whenever you have time. Well, I don't know if I'll be streaming... But the Discord's open. You can always send us messages there. So, but, uh, but thank you so much, Maple. And I hope that the meeting later goes well. Now I'm going to press this dude for all he's worth. Uh, press. So you were already acquainted with Mr. Asman himself? Not really. By chance, I'd seen his name mentioned in the papers, that's all. But I had no interest in his private affairs. If he was an unscrupulous investor, it was no concern of mine. As long as people pay their bills, I take up my tools and construct what they ask for. So why did Mr. Asman approach you in particular, then? Who can say? I presume because my name is associated with excellence in engineering. Not to mention excellence in fraud. Hard to gauge, but the point is, all I did was construct the machine according to the blueprints I was given. In other words, the Kinesis machine was built on solid scientific principles. Yes, you might say that. Professor Harebrain certainly has a mind like no other. Again, good luck, Maple. Aw, oh, Venom. Thanks for the heart emoji. That's so cute. Discord, yes. I have a Discord. I do need to, to, to chat in it more often, but at the very least, you can join. You can talk with other people that hang out in my chat and get notifications for whenever I go live. If it decides to work, it's a real finicky kind of system. But, I... Th it is what it is. I was looking for it, thanks. No problem, buddy. No problem. Um, let's press him on this. It's clear that you have both scientific knowledge and knowledge of conjuring magic, however. The more knowledge you have, the better equipped you are to handle whatever comes along. But your implication is... That I furnish the machine with some trickery, I think. It's a possibility that we have to explore. Unfortunately, though, the machine has been blown to kingdom come. So there's really nothing left to explore, is there? It appears that the Kinesis machine was fitted with a timed explosive device of some kind. And there's nothing left of that device either. Not a single shred of evidence remaining. I hear. I must have planned all this from the outset. But in any case... 
It's abundantly clear that the experiment couldn't have been a trick. And what makes you say that? If the whole show was a fraud, it would have required a body double. Hold it! The fucking mannequin. Uh, of course, that's it. Mr. Asman was a twin. No. Objection. Come on, we already know that's not true. Perhaps my learned friend wasn't listening earlier. Mr. Asman had no twin siblings. No, I heard you before. But the thread of hope hadn't quite left me. The demonstration could have been a trick if there was somebody who looked sufficiently like the victim. But Dr. Scythe absolutely ruled that out as a possibility. It is beyond question that the victim himself, Mr. Asman, did move from the stage to the Crystal Tower. The fingerprints found at the scene attest to the fact. So it can't have been orchestrated using someone who looked identical to Mr. Asman, then. What are you thinking, Mr. Narahodo? Oh, no, nothing. Just that the idea of someone who looked identical to the victim is playing on my mind. All the spectators saw the birdcage appear above their heads, then crash headfirst to the crystal tower. Boom. I'm in, thanks again. Well, thank you so much for joining, Venom. I really appreciate that, dude. You have been one awesome uh, viewer, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, it crashed head first, you say? According to the many witness reports from those there at the time, yes. Were you not there at the exhibition grounds on the day? Hmm. Unlikely. I rarely leave my workshop. Yet another of your unique inventions was found at the scene. Well, it was the unveiling of a machine I'd labor over for many months. I saw it clearly with my own eyes, the birdcage plummeting headfirst into the tower. What a surprise. I believe the victim's neck was broken from the headlong fall, wasn't it? How would you have come by that information? Even an infernal recluse like me reads the newspapers, you know. According to the reports, two injuries were apparent on the victim's body. Yes, he'd been stabbed in the chest by a screwdriver believed to belong to the defendant, and he had broken vertebrae as a result of a fall from a considerable height. Correct. My learned friend has been doing his research, it seems. Do we know which injury was the fatal one? Sadly not. Forensic science is not yet at a level where such things can be determined. Hmm. What we do know is that the victim died having sustained both injuries at some point during the experiment. And since he was found in the birdcage with his neck broken, it's obvious that he fell from a considerable height. Hmm, I suppose that's hard to deny. This is not going to get me anywhere, but I'm going to press it anyway, because we press everything in Phoenix Wright games. Ace Attorney games. I keep saying Phoenix Wright. I mean, he's a descendant of Phoenix Wright, at least. I mean, it's not totally wrong, but this is the great Ace Attorney Chronicles, not Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. So you understood the science, did you? Not in the slightest. Oh, right. As I've said a number of times, I'm an engineer. My job is to manufacture according to the blueprints I'm given. I would be inviting manifold problems if I foolishly allowed my brain to digest the ideas behind them. I could be accused of stealing those ideas, for example. But how is it possible to construct a machine without really understanding the principles it relies on? Well, you're practicing law without really understanding the principles it relies on, aren't you? Boom! Roasted! A very good point. Stand up for yourself, Mr. Narahodo. 
The point is the experiment resulted in instantaneous kinesis taking place. As such, the science must be sound. Yes, and really, experimental results are all that matters when it comes to proving a hypothesis. Sorry, he's certainly very sure of himself. What do you think, Mr. Naruhoto? Well, now that the machine has been completely destroyed by yesterday's explosion, it's going to be impossible to argue its authenticity one way or the other. But if we're unable to establish that it was a piece of stage trickery rather than genuine science, we will have no grounds on which to demonstrate Professor Hairbrain's innocence. Both Mr. Asman and this man in the stand tricked the professor and used him. They took advantage of his naivety and his unbending belief in his work, and I won't let them get away with it. And seeing as the professor is an old friend of Lord Van Zeek's, what on earth must he be feeling towards Drebber? Okay, okay, okay. There was a lot of talk about falling from a height. What do I have that falls... Uh, blah, 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 blah. Crash down with the victim inside the crystal. Causing damage to its base. That's right. If he fell head first into the crystal tower, wouldn't this part have been broken? Alright. I think I'm onto something, but at the same time, I don't think I'm onto something, because usually when I think I'm onto something, I'm getting something very wrong. But I'm gonna do it anyway. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna pursue this. Uh, just want to look at other evidence real quick. Uh, small fragment of very unusual and thick glass that was found in the folds of the clothing of the Professor Waxwork. That's the camera with the blood on it. That's a statue. Why we still have it, I'm not sure, but we're gonna find out. Uh, this is the head of the waxwork thing. Oh, the Professor's autopsy. And the picture, which shows the grating, where a body can fall through, you know? Anyway. Alright, I'm going to present it on this one. Uh, but I'm going to save first, because I'm a scaredy cat. Wait, why do I keep saving on that one? Why don't I save over the... I don't know. You know what? It doesn't matter. Whatever. I'm being too picky. Okay. Uh... Present, and then we're gonna do the bird cage. Objection. Ooh, the music stopped. We've examined the bird cage that crashed into the crystal tower ourselves. As you can see, the cage, which is a wooden construction, has sustained damage in one particular spot. Following the explosion, it fell some 30 feet into the glass of the crystal tower. That level of damage is to be expected, surely. I agree. The damage itself is entirely understandable. What doesn't make sense is the location of that damage. Mm. All the breakages in the wood are at the base of the birdcage, not the top. What are you saying? That's the opposite of where they should be. That's right, my lord. The birdcage that was at the scene is damaged at its base. So we have reports of the birdcage falling headlong into the crystal tower, yet the damage is at the bottom. The only way to reconcile these two facts is to accept that there were two birdcages in play that day, which were at some point switched. The old switcheroo, you know? Switched during what wasn't a scientific experiment at all, but an elaborate piece of stage trickery. Anyway. <laughs> I wasn't sure what to do for that, but I'm okay with what I did. Good gracious, explain yourself, witness. I... will. If we examine the facts, there's only one logical conclusion we can draw. The damage on the base of the birdcage clearly indicates that it crashed tail-first into the tower. Objection. But multiple witnesses' reports claim it fell head-first. The birdcage materialized in the sky next to a balloon flying over the stage, following a spontaneous explosion, at an altitude of some 60 feet above ground level. 
which is approximately 18 meters. It then proceeded to fall some 30 feet into the Crystal Tower in the ensuing deflagration. Witness reports amid such chaos are notoriously unreliable. Objection. But the victim's neck was broken. Objection. He plummeted 30 feet inside a heavy wooden cage. However, he fell, it would be unsurprising to find one or two of his vertebrae crushed. I don't think that's how he does it, but... A riveting scientific analysis of events from the prosecution there. Though to be even more rigorous, you would have to say it was only one vertebra, actually. He wasn't quiet for long. I find it hard to see what's motivating Lord Van Zeeks. This witness is clearly a swindler, and one who deceived a personal friend of his. If you're going to establish this deception, do it right. Sorry? I feel like that's the undertone here. Ah uh, yes, and there's one more point. The defense appears to have forgotten. It obviously wasn't a trick, as a certain truth very plainly demonstrates. What? It seems to me that the cross-examination had better continue until we resolve this matter. Mr. Trevor, you will amend your testimony with details of this truth. Of course, we must treat the matter scientifically, after all. Ah, uh, I nearly had him there. He is a robot. The kinesis clearly took place because there's nowhere else 30 feet high for the birdcage to have fallen from. Did we establish the balloon? Alright, press it. Let's go. What do you mean? Well, before the demonstration began, the victim was alive on stage in front of the audience. Yes, there are lots of witnesses who saw Mr. Asman on the experimentation stage, that's true. And the victim's neck broke as a result of an impact following a fall. Logically, therefore, the victim must have fallen from somewhere. The balloon that exploded was at an altitude of 60 feet. The point of impact on the tower was 30 feet up. That difference of 30 feet is therefore the total distance the birdcage fell. And there's no other location from which the cage could have fallen that distance if it didn't drop out of the sky. Ergo, the victim himself must have been beamed from the stage into the sky above the Crystal Tower. Hmm. A trenchant scientific analysis. Dear me, every time I hear it explained, it sounds increasingly plausible. Oh yes, it's all very well thought out. Certainly all the spectators on the day saw it. The birdcage plummeting 30 feet through the air, I mean. Irritatingly, yes. Uh. Hmm. So now we gotta prove that the birdcage could have fallen 30 feet elsewhere, which I have a feeling I know what I want to do, but again, we're saving because... I'm a coward. So let's go ahead and I think we want to present this picture, don't we? Because the machine on the stage was way high up, right? Whoops. I want to look at this real quick. Yeah, it could have went right there. Ba -ba. But, uh, but yeah, I'm gonna present that though. This one. All right. Objection. Nope, that was wrong. Yeah, da, 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 da. yep, 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 yep. I'm not reading the wrong stuff because then I'm just gonna be repeating it a lot if I keep fucking up, you know. Is it wanting me to think 
Is it wanting me to think a little bit simpler? Like, am I thinking too much about it? Should I just present, like, the picture of the balloon being shot? Because that's what we established in the last one, right? Present... Like this balloon, right? Or do I present, like, this picture? I'm gonna do this picture. No, that's wrong too. Fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. It's wrong. What am I missing here? They keep saying there's nowhere else it could have fallen from, but like... The balloon to the tower or the stage to the ground. Like, am I crazy? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. I remember you getting old, cheese. If you have any kind of advice you want to lay on me right now, feel free to do so, because I am stumped. Wait, what was this for? Oh, the Reaper attack. Right, 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 right. I forgot I got attacked. Examine the whole pick? There's not much to examine. Like, all it does is give me this little magnifying glass. But it clearly shows the grate open. Which is why I presented it, because I was like, well, fall through the stage, 30 feet. Um, unless you mean a different pick. No, that was the whole pick. <laughs> that was the whole pick. No, 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 no. There's no whole picks on this stream. You have to go to my OnlyFans for that. Um, let me see. This we're going to prove the double part. Wait, do I need to do that first? Hold on. If the whole show was a fraud, it would have required a body double. Do I show the shard here? Because the shard kind of proves that the waxwork was the double? Just joking. <laughs> we examined the whole pick. It's fine. I get it. <laughs> uh, I'm going to try the glass shard on this one. No, okay. What if I tried the head? There's nothing else I can... Oh, I can do the waxwork head, I guess. That is hard. I'm gonna load real quick because I am running out of chances. Okay. Um... How about the third evidence right beside the newspaper? Oh, the experiment sketch? Uh, I don't think this has anything. It's like, it's just another magnifying glass thing. But we used this yesterday to show that this could point up here, but then the third balloon that was up here exploded and dropped it here. So, no, I don't, I don't think that's it, because I feel like we already used that one. Damn. What am I missing here? What if I just do this? Objection. No, okay. My sense is not up today. It's okay. Clearly mine are not up to par either, so that's why this is taking longer than expected. Hold it. No, I didn't mean to press. Okay, well, whatever. 
We're just gonna skip this. Skip it, skip it, skip it, skip it, skip it. Beep, beep, boop, boop. Trevor is a robot. And then now he's gonna talk for a bit. Yep, 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 yep. yep. Nowhere it could have fallen from. What are you talking about? We established yesterday about the balloon. Let's try my idea. I am all down for it right now, Venom. What crazy idea do you have cooking? My fault, I can go. <laughs> the sketch? No, no, if it's your fault, you can stick around and keep helping me guess. But the sketch on what? Like, what are we. On this comment? You want me to do it on this comment? With the 30 feet high to fall from? Objection. God damn, Venom. Spot on, buddy. Look at you go. I'm so proud of you. I, it's, uh, man. I just feel like we already used the sketch and established our theory from last time. Like, why do we, why are we repeating this? I don't know. I don't know. We're going to go ahead and just continue with Venom's correct answer. <laughs> this is a diagram of the experimentation stage and its surroundings. We know that somehow the birdcage appeared in midair before falling down into the crystal tower. A fall of about 30 feet, or 9 meters. However, if you examine the diagram carefully, you'll see that there is one other possible location from which the birdcage could have fallen. The same distance of 30 feet. No. Well, it appears the defense has a possible explanation to put forward. Go ahead, counsel. Yes, my lord. Of course. You will indicate the place to which you are referring this same diagram. Oh, on this same diagram. I'm sorry. I'm old and I can't read. The alternative location from which the birdcage could possibly have fallen, the requisite 30 feet. Yeah, I was going to say the height of the stage. Yeah, I was going to put... Like, is this whole thing the correct answer? Or do I need to pick where it started or where it ended? It's definitely the same drop. From which the birdcage could possibly have fallen. So it would have fallen from here, right? That. Music stopped. I think that's a good sign. The place I'm referring to is here. But that's... Where the birdcage would have been to begin with. There are some times in in uh, these Ace Attorney games where I feel like um, the players start to get ahead of themselves. You know, like they start connecting the pieces in their head, and then when it cut like when it comes time to like prove their point. They might use a piece of evidence later on that doesn't apply yet, you know? And in this case, I'm thinking the same thing. Like, grading in the stage drops it. But, like, I had to simplify the thinking, I guess. They were looking for a more simple answer. I don't freaking know, man. It's... I knew where we were going. They just wanted me to get there another way while I lost all my lives going that way. I don't know, it's, a, it's a little frustrating, but it doesn't detract from how much I enjoy the game. So, you know, we accept it, we move on. <laughs> Which is exactly the point, my lord. Yes, the birdcage was in the machine on the stage. But what we must also consider is the height of the stage itself. Go on, counsel. 
It turns out that the experimentation stage was built at a considerable height above ground level. If you look at the diagram, in fact, you'll see it's at about the same height above the ground as the balloon was above the crash site. When the experiment got underway, the machine and the birdcage were engulfed in steam. At that moment, the floor of the stage gave way, and if we assume there to be a void underneath, this birdcage and the one seen by the audience would have fallen almost exactly the same distance. Point. Once again, my lord, this all points to the fact that there was not one birdcage, but two. Objection. My learned friend has no evidence that the stage had such a contrivance in its design. Someone is responsible for the criminal destruction of the Kinesis machine itself, it's true. However, the stage still stands. And take a moment to look at the photographic print I presented to you like five times ago, but no one wanted to listen. Sorry. <laughs> just now I'm just yelling because I'm frustrated but uh, <laughs> uh I love your van voice oh thank you venom I am quite proud of that one uh, I think my favorites are uh I think my favorites are Gregson van Zeeks Gregson I gotta get right I'm still struggling with that one but I really like it Gregson van Zeeks and um Juror number four. <laughs> juror number four, like, in the first trial of this, like, they were going one, two, three, four, just kind of going down, and I'm just like, okay, who am I, what voice am I going to give these people? As soon as I got to juror number four, it was like the old fat guy, and he had like these jowls, and I was just like, got it. Perfect. Know exactly what I'm doing for this guy. I'm going to use a voice to talk like this. Like I'm an angry old man. <laughs> I don't know why. It just struck me. Anyway. Uh, take a moment to look at the photographic print of the scene following yesterday's explosion. Good lord, the metal grill that formed the floor of the machine is undone! Yes, most likely blown open by the force of the explosion that destroyed the rest of the machine. The defense calls for the space below the stage to be investigated immediately. Mr. Drebber. It was you who built the Kinesis machine, which means that it was you who built the two bird cages that were used to carry out this deception. Uh, uh. Whether Professor Harebrain's hypothesis is sound or not makes no difference, because it's the construction of this machine that matters, a machine designed to take Mr. Asman's life and lay the blame firmly at the professor's door. Something that could only have been carried out by you, Mr. Enoch Drebber. Good. Objection. If my learned friend has reached the end of his wild asses, ah, ha, ha, assertions, he just poured that for you. The prosecution would like to crush the defense's argument slowly. But surely. What? Your argument fails to hold water. On two counts. Two? Van's assistant is just his bottle opener. <laughs> At this point, yeah. Here, have some of this. Oh, and he broke the glass again. Well, I gotta get another glass. Another bottle. There we go. Firstly. Before and after the experiment, this witness went nowhere near the Kinesis machine. Every relevant member of staff from the exhibition has attested to that. And I believe members of Scotland Yard have also been on watch duty at every public experiment. In other words, Mr. Drebber had no opportunity to switch the alleged pair of bird cages. But I've already explained why he wouldn't have needed to. The nonsense with the crossbow, that doesn't bolster your case at all. The man who disappeared from the stage and the man who crashed into the tower are one and the same. 
The forensic investigation team's report is unequivocal on that point. Ah! And the second flaw in your assertion is a distinct lack of motive. Why would this man have wanted to take the victim's life? He had no reason to do so. A, a motive? Do I have to think of everything myself? I have here a contract provided by the witness. What contract is this, Lord Van Zeeks? The contract into which Mr. Drebber entered with the victim, Mr. Asman. It reads, Mr. Drebber is to receive 30% of all remunerations from government grants or other income. 30%? Certainly very favorable contractual conditions. But there was one very important provision bolted onto that clause. What provision? Mr. Drebber may only uphold this right on condition that both contracting parties are alive. In other words, if either of us were to die, the contract would become null and void. So you see, I had nothing to gain from Mr. Asbin's death. The diametric opposite, in fact. Ugh. Such heartless man doesn't care about those artisan's tears. I think I said that wrong? Uh, I think, I don't know if you said it wrong or right, but I think I get what you're saying is that uh, all the hard work going into his cups and, and the wine, he just throws it away. I get it. <laughs> hey, if you're rich, you can afford to, you know? Eh. I assume he's rich. I mean, look how he dresses. Need I say more? The witness had neither an opportunity nor a reason to commit the alleged crime. In short, the possibility of Mr. Drever having done as you suggest is nil. Ooh, ah! I don't know. I don't like. I don't really like doing the shout out parts like that. So I might just make him sound silly. <laughs> yeah, he's an aristocrat. Yeah, he was attacked the other day, actually. Yeah. Hmm. It seems the defense's assertion was somewhat wide of the mark. Lord Van Zeeks, you will submit the contract as evidence, please. Good, I want to read this shit. Okay, I didn't read it yet, so he didn't say it's true. Um, Mr. Asman, Mr. Drebber, these only terms by which they would profit from the case. Okay. The investor, Mr. Odie Asman, hereby enters into contract with the provider, Mr. Enoch Drebber, to fund labor and materials for the construction of a super high voltage instantaneous kinesis machine. Mr. Drebber is to receive 30% of all remunerations from government grants or other income. Mr. Drebber may only uphold this right on condition that both contracting parties are alive. Uh, looks like O. Asman and E. Drebber. Wait. Those signatures are going to be important, aren't they? E. Is that his signature? Oh, I don't have the card anymore, do I? I can't compare. Fuck. Alright. He's an ass man! Let's go! <laughs> it's true. If Trevor had no opportunity to switch the birdcage under the stage with the one in the crystal tower, he couldn't have done it. And in any case, I have no idea what his motive might have been. There is one ass- <clears throat> There is one aspect of your argument that still holds true, however. There were two bird cages. The prosecution is unable to deny that. Oh. So I'm sure you're on the right lines, Mr. Narahodo. And I've no doubt there are other aspects of your assertion that are undeniable truths, too. Well, it would seem that the defense has no rejoinder to offer. Well, I must say I'm a little surprised. I came here to testify about the machine I built, and instead my reputation is defiled. What reputation? Everyone already knows you're a fucking fraud. But the prosecution's counter has set the record straight, I think. It's impossible that I'm the culprit. Objection. I love how dramatic it is when you know who said the objection. Definitely Ryunosuke. At the beginning of this trial, we believed that there was only one birdcage. Yet now we know there must have been two. 
In other words, there was more to the demonstration than we realized at first. I think it's abundantly clear that the same applies to the culprit. Get to the point. The stage demonstration was constructed and set up in its entirety by you, Mr. Drever. Therefore, it's inconceivable that you had no hand in the events that transpired. Wait. Odious man as man. As man. Odious man as man. Oh, the signature, it's in an article? I was just about to say, uh, what if Asmin died on accident? I mean, no, he couldn't have, because he got stabbed in the chest. The broken neck could have been an accident, I can accept that. But the stabbing in the chest is not an accident. But then I'm thinking, I don't know if Drebber killed him. Maybe they just wanted to look like a failure, I'm not sure. That's a good question. Uh, you said uh, b b article. Something about an article. Uh, lost cat. You're right. This was important. Lost cat. <laughs> I would love it if that was important. If the lost cat was like significant in some way. I don't have another article. I just have the one newspaper. Do you mean the autopsy? No, there's no signature on the autopsy. I don't know what article. Yeah, I don't. I'm not sure what article you're talking about, buddy. This was an autopsy. No, nope, no signature. Just Courtney Scythe. Also suspicious. Oh, you don't have it yet later on. Oh, shh. No spoilers. You're more than welcome to help. No, no spoilers, though. <laughs> so if circumstances mean it's impossible that you could have carried out the crime yourself, it points to the fact that someone else was involved. Someone else? Counsel, are you suggesting... You're damn right I am, my lord. Mr. Drebber had an accomplice. Objection. An accomplice now. Well, then, I presume you're prepared for what's to come. Now that you're accusing not only this witness, but someone else of the most serious of crimes. If these accusations turn out to be false, then make no mistake. The prosecution will demand an equally serious punishment for your slander. Well, counsel, do you intend to pursue this course and formally accuse another party of involvement in this matter? What do I do here? At the moment, this is little more than a hunch on my part. I don't know for sure if Drebber had an accomplice, or even if he really is the culprit here. One way or another, though, I have to make my position clear. As a lawyer. So what's my stance going to be? Did Drebber have an accomplice, or not? Oh, uh, I hate questions like these, because then... No, you're good. Don't worry, Venom. It's cool. I mean, it was just a piece of evidence. It's fine. I'm sure once I saw it, I would have been like, okay, there's the connection right there. But it's okay. Don't worry about it. Uh, but for now, we got to figure out if he had an accomplice or not. So I'm going to save real quick, uh, because that's what I do. Um, and then I'm going to think a little bit. Name the accomplice or back down. So I would have to name the accomplice. This guy just rubs me the wrong way all day. I don't know what it is, but yeah. Uh, that's Odie Asman, but he died. And the boss of a large criminal organization. There you go, there's the accomplished. Um. It's not these two. Those two are just idiots. Uh, this guy's 35. He looks like he's 70. 
And she's 39, she looks like she's 21. Actually, that's a lie. She does look older than that, but she does look good for 39. <laughs> Pinpointing evidence, it's quite easy. It helps when there's unique things about it, like that signature. But I'll, I'll see that when I get to it. Right now, I'm just trying to determine... Like, I don't like the fact that Courtney is on the autopsy report for the professor and the autopsy report for Asmin. And the fact that she was, like, trying to cover for him by kicking us out so quickly. I don't know. She just rubs me the wrong way, but... One of Lord Strongheart's most trusted allies. I... Mm. I'm leaning toward Tuspell. Just because... She runs the Waxwork Museum. She could have made a double that looks like Asmin. Um, I don't know if she would have had access to the... Switch them, though. I think only she would be able to do that. You know? But still, that doesn't even prove what the motive is. Like, Courtney does look good, absolutely. Yeah, I'd hit that. Um, like he fell, then the cage is broken below, but he had a broken neck. Sus, absolutely. Which means that someone must have been waiting for him below the stage to stab him, and then when they switched the cage, they may have had to just break his neck post mortem. And then put him inside the birdcage that had a broken top to make it look like that's what he... That's one of the injuries he suffered. I don't know. That's... That's what I'm leaning towards anyway, but... Ugh. She's the only one that would have had access to both the body and the crime scene. Their hairs... Their hairs are both white, too. I don't know. Well... Hers is more pink, I guess. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'd tap that too. Hell yeah, Mochi. So we're all in agreement then. Courtney Scythe is... is hot as fuck. Okay. Good. Now we gotta find the accomplice. If there is one. See, I don't want to say Tuss spells because he went through a bunch of trouble to steal a waxwork and then give it back. And it was the Professor one, too. So, why... It had the Shard of Crystal in it. I find it hard to believe she would have gotten it back and not found that Shard. I don't know, this is tough. Ah, well. Let's do it. I'm tired of sitting here and letting you guys get bored by listening to me go around in fucking circles. The defense is ready to name Mr. Drever's accomplice. Somehow the two bird cages must have been switched. Everything points to that. Yet according to the coroner's report, that's not a possibility. But that inconsistency itself is a clue. Counsel. Hmm? My lord? You have received a stark warning already. If you are nevertheless determined, then I must now ask you to identify this alleged accomplice by name. So, your answer, please. Who do you claim to have been Mr. Drebber's accomplice? I'm gonna save again. Well, actually, you know what? Yes, I'm gonna save again, but I'm gonna save here, just in case. Uh, it was Herlock Sholmes. No, I'm kidding. It was Iris, that sneaky ten-year-old. It's gotta be Tusk Spells or Scythe. Or Van Zeeks. Hell, I don't know. I don't know, I think it's one of these two. More leaning towards Scythe, though. But why would she do that? Why would she help this dude out?
Like, she wouldn't have had access. It has to be someone who had access. I'm just gonna go with Scythe. Take that! I'm probably wrong. The name of the person in question is... Yeah, see? It's not even gonna say it because the incorrect response is usually generic so they can reuse it. <laughs> Your boyfriend is so cheesy. Why is he cheesy? What did he do? Did you did you put cheddar on him? Because that, that would make him pretty cheesy. What's wrong, my Nipponese friend? Surely fear doesn't bind your tongue now. It's a little late for that. Of course I'm afraid. After all, naming her in this capacity is definitely going to make... Oh. Naming her in this capacity is definitely going to make a lot of waves. I could very well turn every single person in this courtroom against me. I'm sure it would be alright, Mr. Norohoto. Thank you, Ms. Susato. The enemy always appears larger than life, but you'll appear exactly the same to the enemy. That's not bad advice, actually. That's, that's pretty good. <laughs> no. Oh, you didn't put cheddar on him? Oh, that's too bad. I like a good slice of cheddar. You said words cannot describe how beautiful I am. You're right! That is cheesy. That is like levels above cheddar. That is like some brie. Some... some some manchego. Actually, no, that comment was really Gouda. <laughs> yeah, it was that cheesy that you get a nice bad cheese pun. <laughs> but that's sweet. That's really adorable. I'm glad you guys. I'm glad you guys are connecting like that. It warms my heart, or the black hole that is my heart. All right, then here goes. You've kept us waiting long enough. Your answer, Council, now. The person who colluded with Mr. Drebber in order to carry out this wicked crime is Scotland Yard's coroner, Dr. Courtney Scythe. What, what the blazes are you talking about, Dr. Scythe? The head of the forensic investigation team and the coroner who conducted the autopsy on the victim? We know there were two bird cages, so who could have carried out the switch to complete the illusion? The accident happened in front of a huge crowd of spectators and the area was immediately sealed off. Then everyone, police officers included, were banished to make way for the forensic investigation team. When, when else could the switch have occurred? It can only have been in that team's presence. It's essential that the court determines exactly what happened following the incident. The defense demands that Dr. Scythe be summoned to the witness stand at once to testify. There's my boy, number four! I don't know who that kid is. Who lets their kid be on a jury? You've got a nerd, lad. Standing up there, dragging the yard's name through the mud. I... I didn't mean to. I know the woman very well. There's no better dead room worker out there. How dare you call her a criminal? My learned friend's imagination appears to be wilder than the East End at night. But the recklessness of your accusation aside, there's another grave problem with your argument. One which the prosecution demands you address at once. A grave problem? Ha ha ha! Grave? That's funny. The professor's dead. Anyway. Yeah, cheesy indeed. I mean, though, I said that's just called being... Illiterate. <laughs> wow. Wow, way to shoot down a compliment, Mochi. Just take it. Just take it and put it in your little heart pocket. Oh my word! Who do you claim acted as the victim's doppelganger? What? Hmm. Certainly, if the birdcage containing the body of the victim was exchanged for another, that cage must also have contained a body. And yet, no missing persons or accidental deaths of anyone even remotely resembling the victim have been reported. Which means there was no one, dead or alive, who could have fulfilled the role of a body double for Mr. Asman. Assman. I keep saying Asman. It's Assman now. Just like Gina is Gina. Ugh, that's true. If my argument is that there were two bird cages, then there must also have been one person inside each. But I don't know if I've got an answer to this yet, have I? 
What can I do to reveal how this body double stunt was achieved? I think I know what I need. I think I know what I need to do. Which is save, obviously. First thing, save. I think we need to present some evidence. You know? Never? There is only a cavity there? I refuse to believe that anyone that is actively searching for a romantic partner could just have a cavity there. That doesn't strike me as, as something someone with a cavity would do. Search for love. I'm not buying that, Mochi. Nice try, though. We are on a roll with our logical deductions here, and that's my next one. Let's present evidence. <laughs> Shush. No. Ah, okay. It's got to be the glass shard, right? The crystal tower glass shard. Or I could name Tuspell, I suppose. I don't know. Let's try it. Let's try the shard first, because that's what jumped out at me first. But very well, the defense will address my learned friend's concerns by presenting evidence that reveals the true nature of Mr. Asmund's body double. Good gracious, evidence! I do hope this isn't filibustering, Council. The court is expecting a name. If you think you have relevant evidence, present it now. The body double and the birdcage were hiding inside the balloon that was floating above the stage, which means that any witnesses would only have seen them from 60 feet away. So who was it that appeared out of that explosion some 18 meters above the spectators? Aha! The body double inside the second birdcage was... Would I present the head or the glass? It would be the glass, right? I would assume it's the glass, anyway. It's gotta be the glass. Take that! Oh, see? I know where I'm going with it. He just doesn't want to work with me. Wow, oh my god. Well, probably something along these lines, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's hard to see how another person could have been inside the second birdcage, which means the body double must have been something else. Something else. I'm aware of what it is. God damn it. I shall have to ask you to reconsider your answer, counsel. But I don't know if I've got an answer to this yet, have I? You do! It's not a someone, it's a thing. I just don't know what evidence shows the thing. Unless I can present Tuspel and be like, not her, but the wax. I'm gonna do it as it's again. I'm gonna try evidence one more time. And if it doesn't work, I'm gonna reload. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna try the head now. Take that. It was the fucking head. We know that the victim, Mr. Assman, was in the birdcage that was situated inside the Kinesis machine on stage. And therefore, he couldn't have been inside the second birdcage. Instead, that contained something else. What's been described as a body double, which is what fell from the sky and crashed into the Crystal Tower. Yes, Council, according to your somewhat elaborate version of events. And that body double inside the second birdcage was, in fact... It's alright, Mr. Naruhoto. You're ready for this. Just steal yourself. And come out with it. Thank you, Miss Susato. I needed that. As I was saying, the body double inside the second birdcage was... As unbelievable as it may seem, that thing there... Who the f- who brought the wax to this trial? Objection. Uh, 
Open your eyes and look into mine, my Nipponese friend. Now tell me, what are you playing at? Stand firm now, Ryunosuke. This is the time to show your Japanese spirit. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> As the court will observe, this is a waxwork model. A model, in fact, of an infamous London murderer from ten years ago, the Professor. Objection. You started by indicting the leader of the forensic investigation team as an accomplice in this crime. And now you've moved on to indicting waxworks? Yes, that's about the size of it. But why? And why this waxwork? It looks nothing like the victim. In fact, it could hardly resemble him less. What possible justification can you give? If you want to know why, ask Mr. Drebber. What? Just days before Professor Harebrain performed his public demonstration, Mr. Drebber abducted this model from Madame Tuspell's. D did you just say abducted? Wow, I feel like I got that wrong. And two days after the incident at the Great Exhibition, he returned it to the museum. Then, the timing. Is this true, Mr. Drebber? Ugh. Um... At first, I couldn't see why Mr. Drebber would have stolen the waxwork and then given it back again. But now, the reason is clear. He took it so that he could put it inside the second birdcage as a body double for Mr. Assman. Uh. Oops. Objection. Are you hearing this, ladies and gentlemen of the jury? Are you hearing the defense's astonishing proposal? that the witness fabricated this vast machine with the intention of deceiving some wretched scientist. Why are you calling your friend wretched? That's, that's fucking rude. That he did so in collusion with the country's finest coroner on a public stage in front of a vast audience. And that to effect the deception, he used a waxwork model that in no way resembles the victim. Are we really to believe this far-fetched tale? What do you decide? Objection. Wait. Yes, if you put it like that, of course it sounds implausible. My lord. I need to speak, if you please. Go ahead, Mr. Foreman. Myself and my colleagues have reached an agreement. Very good. In that case... Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will state your leanings for the court to hear now. Guilty. 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 Who, who let the kid up there? I'm still surprised. Also, why are the two dudes that helped me find Enoch Drever... I'm flabbergasted by that, honestly. So, as indicated by the foreman, the jury has reached a consensus. I knew that was going to happen. We shall get through this, Mr. Narahodo, as we always do. And uncover some new truths along the way, I'm quite sure. Yeah, I agree. I'm going to have to appeal to the jurors as usual and see if I can persuade them to change their minds. The defense will now embark on a summation examination. Are you and your fellows ready to proceed, Mr. Foreman? We are, my lord. I don't know what voice to give this guy, honestly. Very well. In that case, I ask you now to state clearly for all present to hear the grounds on which each of you has decided that the defendant is guilty of the crime of which he is charged. And I talk really fast sometimes. He's staring right into my eyes. It's so creepy. Judicial findings, the jurors' contentions. I've known that woman for years. She'd never be an accomplice to anything. It's utter nonsense to think those two would ever be conniving with one another. Oh dear, this is the most troubling. But surely the waxwork the man stole has nothing to do with the coroner, is it? I've had my own problems with members of the police. I do not trust them much. I've seen no murder as people in this waxwork from the murder inside the murder cage. It's conjecture. 
There it is. Number four. Favorite voice right now. Accusing someone without right evidences. He's not a proper job, is he? I won't have it. Ye old England was a crazy place, apparently. Somewhat unsurprisingly, it seems the introduction of this waxwork model to the proceedings has polarized opinion. Given that its face is obscured and its build in no way resembles that of the victim. I can only applaud my learned friend's temerity at suggesting it as Mr. Asman's body double. Yes, the applause is deafening. And yes, I know it seems extraordinary. But that's the point. That's why I have a strong feeling it's actually a greater clue than anyone yet realizes. What are you thinking, Mr. Naruhoto? I can't explain why at the moment, but I feel as though there's a specific reason why it was used. Why it had to be this model. Really? A reason why nothing else would do, you mean? Yes, and I'm convinced it's something far more significant than whether or not this model looked like the victim. Well, if that's the case... We must prevent the trial from ending prematurely at all costs. Yes, agreed. I have to find a way out of this. If you are ready, Counsel, you may proceed with the summation examination. Yes, my lord. Bah. Jury examination. The defense's rebuttal. Why am I starting out with six? I thought normally it went like one to... Ah, oh, whatever. Alright, cue it up. Um, the order of things seems to have changed around here for some reason. Wow, I'm glad I, would, I noticed. I'm a couple, lad. It's a couple's discretion to bend the rules sometimes when needs must. What's wrong with that? Where do I start? I've been working at the yard for 40 odd years. That's even more than I thought. We've only had a metropolitan police service in town for 70 years, you know. Of course, times have changed. The public didn't trust coppers back when I started. It was rough. We had to fight crime, and we had to fight to win the public's trust as well. And we win, we did. Forensic science was in its infancy, too, even more than it is now. And she spearheaded the revolution. Dr. Scythe, you mean? That's right. About ten years ago now it was, when I was still a youngish bobby on the beat. That's when she started making a name for herself as a top-class coroner. And now look at her, head of the forensic investigation team, and a woman no less. Well, you won't hear me complain. It's what we all dreamt of back then, I tell you. Could you tell me without holding that gun in the air? We were all out top her justice, lad. Full of vim, we were. Full of vim. That's coming across loud and clear. Alright, nothing from that guy. Now we go back to order. Got it. Alright. Press number one. Let's go. But we're only just starting to understand this case. What are you reading there, sir? Uh, still not sure what voice to give this man. The man who hired those murders on Solar Pond Street was caught two days flat. That's real policing for you. That's really not relevant to this case, is it? Go wrong there. Because it was Dr. Scythe in charge of examining the bodies. And it was evidence arising from her work that led to the arrest of the scoundrel responsible. Oh. That's right, Oh, That woman is at the forefront of this country's fight against crime. The idea that she's somehow involved in this murky business is a load of old tosh. I thought it was up to me to press the jurors, not the other way around. I have evidence for her. Can I show evidence? I, the glass has to be relevant, damn it! <laughs> Why would you assume that? Well, quite simply because our unsettling swindler has no relationship with the woman, does he? True, as it stands, we don't know of any connection. Oh gosh, but it would be delightfully romantic if they were somehow to have a mutual interest in the waxwork. Romantic? A woman of society such as myself views everything in terms of relationships, you know. Wow. Way to belittle yourself, I guess. Well, you learn something new every day, even if you don't want to. One might wonder about a possible relationship between the defendant and this coroner woman. Or perhaps between the defendant and the handsome prosecutor just there. 
This woman may be more astute than I've been giving her credit for. If that's the woman's stance, then perhaps demonstrating some connection between the waxwork and Dr. Scythe would be enough. Yes, I agree. As soon as we have even a whiff of a connection, she'll be the first to know. You, you're the one of the two dudes that was like, this guy ain't trust... Okay, I'm gonna stop. What sort of problems? Let's just say we have run into each other on numerous occasions while I've been performing on the street. Uh, he's That's Hairbrain's voice. Fuck. Right, I see. Maybe a more... mysterious voice? Obviously, artists such as myself cannot appear on stage as we work in close proximity to our audiences. So we perform our great magic in parks, on street corners, and the like. But the police use any excuse... But the police use any excuse to make our lives difficult. So, uh, what's up, boy? Excuse me. Excuse, excuse me. It's just, it's just it's a little thing right here. Excuse me. Do you have something to say in response to that, Mr. Ottermall? Who are you calling a mess murderer? Uh, sorry, my mistake. I got confused because I heard you look like him. I don't look anything like the man. You want to be locked up, Sonny. Thanks, Mr. Sholmes. Perhaps we can move on? I was really wondering if you had something you wanted to add in response to what juror number three just said. And clearly you do. Back in my day, back in the good old days, it wasn't like this. Uh, what was it like, sir? We worked our fingers to the bone during the public's trust, we did. And by Jove, we had to. People respected us back then. Respected you? Oof. No one would have called a coroner into question in them days. A coroner's report was the hallmark of an investigation done right. Especially when Dr. Courtney Stevens put her name to Uh, I was right. I was right. I was right. There are the two. One and the same. There's a connection right there between her and the professor. Woo! Anyway. She was the best of the best, and the apple of the force... H hold on a minute. What are you talking about? Who's Courtney Stevens? Uh, sorry. Got a bit carried away there. Stevens is Dr. Scythe's maiden name. Her maiden name? So that was before she was married. Of course, yes, silly me. It's Scythe now, isn't it? Stevens. I'm sure I've seen that name somewhere recently. Anyway, the point is those were the great days of policing, not like now. Sorry to interrupt, sir. But do you think you could change your statement to include that name? Yeah. Yes, I don't see why not. She was Courtney Stevens back then when I knew her, of course. A legendary coroner, even then. Um, I can't present anything, so it's just press and pit. So that's progress, I think. Wait. So if I pit them against each other, would that... Would I be able to show evidence that... There is a relation there. With the Stevens, with Dr. Scythe and the Professor. You know what, I'm gonna try. Fuck it. And on the third day, the Lord said, fuck it, pit them against each other. Pit. Those two statements clearly contradict each other. Good gracious. To whose statements do you refer, counsel? So, juror number two. Oh, gosh, me? W what can I do for you? I presume that you heard what juror number six said in his statement. It's brought to light the maiden name of the coroner, Dr. Scythe, which in turn has revealed a connection that wasn't apparent before. Well, naturally, as a woman of society, I find such connections and relationships irresistible. But oh golly, I'm afraid I failed to see what you mean. Dr. Scythe's maiden name is Stevens. 
And through that name, the coronor is very definitely linked to the waxwork of the killer. Wow, I said coronor, didn't I? Fuck. Coroner! Okay. Hey, Venom, welcome back, sir. What's going on? Not much, just trying to stop the jury from killing an innocent scientist. But, you know, all in a day's work. Uh, so yeah. The defense has evidence to prove it. My goodness, evidence, you say? How utterly enthralling. Counsel, the court cannot overlook that last remark. I very much hope there is substance to your claim. Of course, my lord. I would ask the court to look at this. The evidence that clearly links Dr. Side to the mass murderer known as the Professor. No, that's the contract. No, that's the... There it is. Take that! I have here a certain autopsy report from ten years ago. A ten-year-old autopsy report? What relevance does that have? It is, of course, from the autopsy of the person portrayed in the waxwork. The killer known as the Professor. The professors? But that man wasn't a capital offender, so... That's right. This is the certification of death that was drawn up after the convict's execution. The identity of the killer was never made public, so the report gives few details. But what's important is the name of the coroner who wrote coroner. Why do I keep fucking that word up? Jesus Christ. Coroner. The coroner. Oh, I just said it again. Coroner. Coroner. Sorry. As always, yes, good luck, my guy. Thank you, Venom. I'm pretty sure I'm going to need your help soon enough. And hey, Bryce, how you doing? Welcome in. Thanks for dropping by to say hello. How's your day going? It's nice guy, Bryce. <laughs> nice guy, Bryce. <laughs> Sorry, I like that. Uh, you're great. Glad to hear it, sir. Glad to hear it. How'd the rest of your weekend go? Or no. Yeah, I talked to you Sunday. Through, you know, Morrow and Funky's streams, but... My Saturday was full of missing memories, so... But that's just me. But yeah, how was, how was your weekend? How was your, how's your Monday going? I know my Monday was pretty okay, but... You know, it is what it is. But, uh, but yeah, welcome in. Uh, what's important is the name of the coroner who wrote it. Courtney Stevens. Oh my! Courtney Stevens?! Struggle alert! It appears that the professor's autopsy was conducted by Dr. Scythe ten years ago, and a few days ago, Dr. Mr. Drebber very deliberately stole the waxwork of the professor from Madame Tuspel's. A waxwork that doesn't, in fact, resemble the victim, Mr. Assman, at all. And do you suppose there's some unsavory relationship between those events? Absolutely, I'm sure of it. There's no doubt in my mind that the professor case is at the heart of a link that we have yet to uncover. Between Dr. Courtney Scythe and Mr. Enoch Drebber. Hidden links? Mysterious connections? Secret relationships? This is almost extraordinary! We're surely obliged now to explore this further. Boom, baby. One down, three to go. Quite right. We can't let this trail come to an end now. Not while there's this cloud of suspicion hanging over the yards. Best coroner. It wasn't like this in my day, but we're still here to uphold justice in the end. Two down. Two more to go. It's the professor. That's what links that frightful swindler in the co- Yep, it is. Okay. Um, Do I need to talk to you again? I'll come back to you if I need to. I want to talk to this guy. Hold it. Juror number four, our favorite. Um, and it's going great. Good to hear, Bryce. Good to hear. What are you doing this night? What are you doing to unwind? What do you do to de-stress yourself? Because this is what I do. And I know Venom's... I think Venom's playing Fortnite, if I'm not mistaken. Everyone's got their... Their things they do. After the work day is over, to just take it easy chill. Anyway, but you claim the whole instantaneous Kinesin demonstration was a trick. Don't out head, but there's more than one way to pull a rabbit out of a hat, isn't there? Sorry? I grant you, given that this cage appeared from a Mr. Explosion, there had to have been no need to use a real person. 
but if a waxwork had been used, the culprit could at least have the decency to make it look like a victim. I'm not sure exactly how much criminals are governed by decency. The point is, if we're going to make a claim about that waxwork being inside the birdcage, you need to give us some evidence. Without that, it's just not science. I suppose we should expect nothing less than a logical argument from a fellow of the Royal Society. But that perhaps means his mind could be changed if we managed to present suitable evidence. Evidence that the Professor Waxwork was inside that birdcage. Hmm. Can I produce that or not? I want to say yes, but this game's going to tell me no. <laughs> Let's save it again, why don't we? Anyway, um, play video games? Nice, nice. Alright, that's cool. I get it. Play video games. That's what I'm doing, isn't it? Well, I hope whatever you're playing tonight is just taking a load off. Haha, ha, no it was. Wait, who was it? Uh, I forgot. Okay, you're gonna hear that a bit. I'm scrolling up through chat to see if I can remember. Oh, it was Fern. It was Fern. Okay. Yeah, my bad. It was Fern. Hey, Fern, welcome back. Fern was the one playing Fortnite while I'm in the background. But yeah. <laughs> but welcome back, Fern. How'd it go? Did you get a victory? But what I do is just eat, sleep, watch streams, or just play video games. Same here, man. Same here. Throw in some YouTube videos, and that's essentially what I do, too. Besides going to work, obviously, but we don't want to talk about that. Uh, I have evidence. I think I have evidence, but I'm going to be wrong, apparently. Actually, I have something I'd like you to see, sir. Oh. I must warn you that if I firmly believe, it's only wise to trust men in white coats. So given your jet black outfit, I don't mind admitting to a central trepidation here. So you don't trust anyone in black. Looking in the mirror must be very trying. I do have some evidence that proves the waxwork was inside that birdcage. Namely, it better be the freaking glass, I swear to God. Thank you. What's that? A piece of glass? So it's a beautifully piece of glass. Yes, it's a piece of broken glass that we found inside the jacket on the waxwork. As you say, it's not ordinary glass, though. It's very thick and clearly made for extra strength. Much like the special glass that was developed for the construction of the Crystal Tower. The Crystal Tower! Holy smoke! Exactly. The centerpiece of the Great Exhibition, where the very incident we're talking about, took place. On the day in question, the birdcage fell from above and smashed through a window of that special glass. From much a small piece originated, is that it? Precisely. So what do you say? Now that clear evidence in support of the asser assertion has been placed before you. Well, I don't say, I only trust running my coat as a rule, however. When a versioning is found, it's hard to say color shouldn't come into it. Wow. That is the most... reasonable... wow. If only more people that were racist thought this color shouldn't come into it. Boy. There's there's a quote for you from the genius minds at Ace Attorney. <laughs> anyway. Uh, doing well. My friend and I only got one dub. Eh, one's better than none. Uh, when I used to play... I never really played Battle Royale games, but I used to play Warzone with friends whenever they wanted to play. Um, I think I only got like five dubs in that ever, so... I clearly wasn't very good at it. <laughs> but one's better than none, so. Hold up, I heard my name as soon as I got here talking shit. No, no, we were just trying to remember who said they were playing Fortnite. That's all. Uh, I'm fine just reading a story while listening to my guy here. Very cool. Hopefully it's a good story. What's the story about? Nah, he thought I was the one playing Fortnite. Yeah, I thought Venom said he was playing, but it was it was you, Fern. That's all. Uh, what is this game called? This game? This game game? Uh, this game game is called uh, Great Ace Attorney 2 Resolve. It's all about being an ace attorney. Well, this one takes place in, like, 
the 1900, like literally like 1901 or something. So nice. I tried out Warzone, but I didn't really enjoy it. Um, why is that? May I ask? Cause like I tried Fortnite a long time ago and I found the building aspect of it just completely insufferable. Like I hated it. That's why I think Warzone was better for me. Cause like the building aspect was gone. It was just all guns and shooting, but like, if you liked the building aspect of it, that's totally cool, and I can understand why you probably didn't enjoy Warzone. You have no clue, to be honest? That's fair. That's fair. If you don't know, you don't know. It's totally cool. I'm reading Sinking into the Mire. Never heard of it. Sounds interesting, though. I've been playing Fortnite a lot more since they added zero build. I hate the building aspect. Okay. All right, I figured, like, that seems to be a popular opinion now that zero builds out because it was so freaking annoying to like see someone start shooting at them. And then like two seconds later, they've built this entire tower around and I'm just like, that's the dumbest fucking thing. Ah, it was annoying, but hell, you know, if you like it, that's cool. I, I don't judge. It's just not for me. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I got sick and tired of running into some kid building. the t Yeah, exactly. Exactly. See, you get it. <laughs> Great minds. Uh, think alike sometimes. And then I get stupid and fail this game again. Um, and what about you cloned me here yet? I feel obliged to change my position on the matter. In that case, juror number four, you will amend your statement now, please. The problem of that piece of glass leaves me a little doubt that the boxwork was indeed inside that birdcage. Okay. All right, let's talk to the little kid, I guess. See what they're up to. I've got to ask, why have you brought that corn into court with you? Colonel Cobb, he's been grown back on the farm. Picked him off on me way into town. He's a proper nibbler, he is. Colonel Cobb. Jesus Christ. Yes, the nibbling seems to be taking quite a while. Maybe you could wait until after the trial? Oh, I don't like the sound of that. You need colonels at times like these. Whenever I have something big to decide, the colonels always point me in the right direction, see? You talking about your cob of corn? Nibble nobble guilty bobble! Nibble not guilty out! Nibble nobble guilty bobble! Nibble not guilty out! Nibble nobble guilty bobble! Nibble not guilty out! Let me guess. Nibble nobble guilty bobble, nibble not guilty out. What the fuck are we doing? What the fuck was that? <laughs> it's a short stories of corruption. That sounds pretty cool. That makes sense, judging from the title, yeah. It's corn! It's a big lump of nuts. It's got the juice. <laughs> Is that what you were going for, Mochi? It's got the juice. <laughs> That's a funny video. The kid, the kid deserves it. Fern got back into reading recently. I read Animal Farm by George Orwell, and now I'm going to start 1984. After that, I'm going to read Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. Damn! That's some heavy material, dude. I, I read... I read a... There was a... Someone posted something about, like... What's one of the dumbest things you've heard someone say? And I think someone heard a conversation or something where... These two people were on a date... And the guy asked the girl, like, so what do you read these days? And she goes, oh, I just read stuff like Animal Farm. And I guess the guy, like, laughed for a solid minute. And then replied to her, like, you shouldn't be reading children's books. And oh my god, it was so fucking funny. It was so funny. Oh my god. It was hilarious. Anyway. Yeah, it was kind of a tongue... Well, it wasn't that much of a tongue twister, but it was just like... Nibble nobble guilty bobble. Nibble not guilty out. Something like that. Fuck. <laughs> it absolutely was good. I'm glad we're on the same page, at least. I'm I'm not judging you. They're, they're great novels, honestly. I mean, there's dystopian... Uh, like, stories of dystopian societies are always interesting, because it's always curious to see where people think it'll go, you know, when shit hits the fan, you know? Animal Farm was really good, and I started in 1984 in high school, but never finished it. No. 
Now that I got my own copy, I'm going to finish it. Yeah, finish it. Finish 1984. It's only taken you... 20... 39 years. <laughs> no, 38. I'm kidding. I know it actually... I don't think it came out in 1984, but I just wanted to make the joke. <laughs> Bryce has a question. What is the question, Bryce? Lay it on me. Makes you wonder what the hell's gonna happen in the future? Yeah, same here, buddy. Have you seen a boot to the face on YouTube? I have not. I have not seen that video. It doesn't ring any bells. Um, but if you want to post a link to it in the Discord, I'd be happy to check it out after stream. Or sometime tomorrow when I have a chance. 1984 launched in 1948. Well, that's easy to remember. But my math was way off then. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm working on an art project and I'm almost done. What are you working on, Mochi? Do share. I am super curious. No worries, I was awful at math. Yeah, me too. I pretty much did what I was required to do and then stopped. And then I went to college and had to do, like, calculus and discrete math. And I, I'm telling you, I learned it and then it just went out as soon as I was done. I don't remember it anymore. I hated it. I did too. I was never a big fan. Reading is one way to relax and have a good time. It. Yes, it is, actually. It is. I'm reading right now, technically. Actually, yeah, I, I am. It's a visual novel of sorts. History has always been your favorite subject? That's cool. History is always interesting because, you know, if we don't learn from the past, we're doomed to repeat it. My favorite was science. I love science. Chemistry, biology, physiology, anatomy. That was always cool. That was my shit. Did I show you the paint by number I was doing? No, you did not. Is it on my phone? No. You did not. I, I would like to see it, though. It's funny... Oh, it's funny and from Ace Attorney? Okay. I love those, uh... I love those silly videos that people put together of Ace Attorney stuff. It's pretty cool. You were okay at science? Eh, we all had our specialties. That's just, you know, everyone's different. Everyone's unique. Maths was my shit. <laughs> That's because you're smart, Mochi. Unlike me. Uh... Perhaps it's akin to a fortune... T oh. Perhaps it's akin to fortune telling with flower petals like people do back home? So Professor Hairbrain's fate is to be decided by a cob of corn. Could you not at least wait until we've had more time to find the truth before deciding on the defendant's guilt? Well, I don't know about that! Me time's awfully full already! A amazing. Well, she was useless. I know it seems a little far-fetched to think that the waxwork model of the presser was in that birdcage. But on the other hand, it explains a lot. If there really is a reason why that particular waxwork had to be used as Mr. Assman's double, we must do everything we can to make the jurors understand it. The truth is, I'm sure that's the key to this, but it's the most puzzling part of it, too. In that case, you should see what additional information you can glean whilst trying to change the jurors' minds. If you can read a book whilst eating a rice cracker, Mr. Naruhoto, I'm sure you can do this. Right. Yes. Books and rice crackers. That's a lot like going to court. Alright, nope. Okay, I'm not worrying about him. Alright, I'm gonna finish pressing him, because we didn't finish with him, as far as I'm aware. It's in Mochi Fun Facts, that's funny. What's the story behind Mochi Fun Facts? Uh, Mochi had some fun facts she wanted to share, and wanted people to, uh, if they wanted to hear some, they could just ask and redeem. Simple as that. Same, I remember in my old days where I got my first line of eight and cried so bad. First line of eight what? Oh god. Oh. I'm not sure what you mean by first line of eight. What sort of problems? Say we're into... Let's just say we have run into each other numerous occasions while I've been performing on the street. Right, I see. Obviously, artists such as myself cannot appear on stage as we work in close proximity to our audiences. So we perform our great magic in parks, on street corners, and the like. But the police use any excuse to make our lives difficult. 
Sometimes they even cook up a story to extort monies from the pole. Well, that's definitely not right. Yes, and it's why I say that if you trust the police, you will have trouble. But here you are, claiming this waxwork model was stolen to star an illusionary spectacular. The idea is so wild, I think I will take my chances and believe the authorities on this occasion. This is how the public at large views Scotland Yard, is it? Our own police force in Tokyo is not even 20 years old yet, is it? Perhaps we should view what's happened here in London as a measure of what may happen at home. Yes, like a Scotland Yardstick. Was it worth it? Was the joke worth it, Naruhoto? Uh, be right back. Alright, Bryce. Take your time, dude. We'll be here. As in my art project. Yes, you love the joke? Yeah. I enjoyed it too, I just couldn't believe he made it. I wonder how a policeman would feel listening to the way this juror speaks about the Force. I'm sure he'd have a word or two to say in response. No, I already checked him. We're good. Hold it. Thank you for reconsidering your position, sir. The more time is placed by, my opponent is governed by logic and science and nothing else. Yeah, science is where you should direct your words of gratitude. Ah. What's the matter, Mr. Cooker, to say some words of thanks to the mother of all academic subjects? What is it about scientists? Honestly. Alright, I don't think I'm getting anything else from them. Well, I can put I can pit these two against each other. Cause he's saying evidence. She's saying accusing someone without right evidence. Uh, let's let's save it and try. I don't I don't know. I've exhausted my presses, I think. A Scotland yardstick. Yeah, that was good. Highest was like 90 in our school, and 80 is still passing. A group of strict parents and getting something below 90 is just disappointing. I knew 80 was passed, but in my head that grade is shit. That's fair. I mean, I've I've never I haven't I've never lived in one of those situations, but I've certainly seen it. I've heard about it. It can be tough, but in short, I'm afraid of failure. That seems like the natural kind of development from a from a situation like that, which I feel is both it can be a good thing, but it also can be a very terrible thing. It really depends on the severity of it. I thought it was your joke, not gonna lie. No. I am not that... Oh, I am that... I'm kind of that clever. I'm sometimes that clever. Depends on the day, you know? But now failing is just okay? That's how you learn things? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it depends. Exactly. But I'm glad that you, you kind of work to see it differently like that. It's much more... Cre uh, not creative. Productive. Much more productive to see it that way, that's for sure. But I surely learned my lesson. Alright, let's try it. Objection. Those two statements clearly contradict each other. Good gracious, to whose statements do you refer, Council? If you could put down your corn for a moment, juror number five. Oh, you mean me! You pointed out that it's wrong to make an accusation without evidence. But the accusation that the waxwork model was inside the second birdcage on the day in question is not without supporting evidence, as the defense demonstrated to the juror sitting beside you. Oh, is that right? Would it be fair to say... you didn't follow the argument? I don't understand much besides Colonel Cobb, to be honest! Mm. Of course you don't. Please do, sir. Now that this assumption of yours about the wax work has been backed up by some solid evidence, it will be wrong of me as a man of science not to pursue the matter further. Yay, number three. I need one more, right? 
Oh, well, me too, then. Wow. So easily swayed, this juror number five. Almost like she's an impressionable child. Sorry? If this brainy gentleman says he's right, then he must be. See, I, um, I wouldn't dream of going against Colonel Cobb or anyone who's got stuff in between the ears. I'm so glad her kindergarten education is paying off. Success, if you can call it that. Alrighty, I'm getting tired. I'm off to bed. I'll catch you later. All right, Fern, thank you so much for hanging out. I really appreciate it. Um, I hope that uh, the rest of your week goes well if I don't get to talk to you again for a bit. But uh, but thank you so much. Um, and also, thank you for, for engaging in chat in Discord. I know, admittedly, I probably should do that a bit more like to start the conversations. But I am an introvert and kind of antisocial. So I'm working on it. I'm working on it. But I appreciate you being there to just kind of keep things going. So, uh, so yeah, take care of yourself, and I will talk to you later, my man. <laughs> Rest well and see. So yes, absolutely. All right, uh, success. Yes, we can call it that because I worked hard for that. I had to talk to a little girl with a Colonel Cobb. Thank you, Council. That will do. As a result of the summation examination, the jury's overall leaning has changed. Two jurors now call guilty, against four who call not guilty. Accordingly, the court has failed to reach a consensus at this time. And the trial must continue. We... we did it. Oh, well done, Mr. Narahoto. Another wonderful victory. Hmm. A waxwork of the despicable professor used as a body double for the victim in this quite extraordinary case. I must say, it's extremely hard to believe the assertion could possibly be true. However, it would appear that it does at least warrant further investigation. It's the waxwork of the professor that links Mr. Drebber and Dr. Scythe. And I'm convinced that there's a special significance to that link. I don't know what you're hoping to prove, lad. I really don't. The truth, sir. By using evidence and testimony. Huh. Back in my day, we didn't use evidence and testimony. We just accused whoever the hell we wanted. Um. <laughs> I'm good, dude. Aw, thank you, Venom. Thank you, Fern. You guys are the best. And welcome back, Bryce. Bryce is also a cool dude. Bryce is nice. That's why, that's why he's Bryce. Bryce is nice. Anyway. Um... If the cult is to delve deeper into the alleged involvement of the waxwork in this case, then the prosecution calls for the owner of the model to be summoned as a witness. The owner? Madame Tusspells. I, I really thought that Lord Van Zeeks would object to this whole line of enquiry. Very well, I concur. Make arrangements for Madame Tusspells to appear as a witness with immediate effect. Listen carefully, my learned friend. Oh, yeah? You should know that you're on the brink of opening Pandora's box. The court shall now adjourn for 45 minutes. During that time, the prosecution will summon the new witness and prepare her for taking the stand. Madame Tuspels, yes. I shall see to it at once, my lord. Clap! Anyway. Santa Judge, how I wish to feel that beard. It is a pretty epic beard. I'm only, I can only hope that once mine turns white, I can grow it out that long. It'll be great. Save my progress! Not even heard. Oh, and I sent that video to your Discord. Cool, cool, cool. It's actually called a boot to the head. <laughs> Face is on the head, same place. I get what you were going for, though. But thank you. I will definitely check that out. <laughs> Either after this or tomorrow when I have a moment. 
24th, October, 11.53 a.m. The Old Bailey Defendant's Antechamber. Boy, I can go for some french fries right now. Ah, the Knight Errant himself. Oh, have you been watching from the gallery, Mr. Sholmes? I've been on the edge of my seat the entire time. Courtroom trials are fascinating affairs, as a spectator at least. I'm glad you've been enjoying yourself. I... I have to ask. What on earth is going on? It makes no sense! What's this professor business all about? He doesn't look... <laughs> oh god. Oh. <coughs> that voice went wrong in my throat. I'm sorry. He doesn't look like any professor I've ever met before. Who even is he? Oh, of course. You were in Germany already ten years ago. Yes, the professor. When I discovered he was the one who had been abducted, a sense of foreboding stirred within me. But who knew the monster would come knocking at your door? My heart felt sympathies. <laughs> As it turns out, Lord Van Zeeks is even more intimately tied to this case than any of us realized, isn't he? Yes, how true. His great friend from a university in the dock. And now a waxwork of the killer who took his esteemed brother's life makes an appearance too. I imagine even the shrewd Mr. Reaper failed to foresee that kick in the teeth. An extraordinary move on your part, my dear fellow, to throw that in front of the man. You make it sound deliberate. I can't help feeling that this professor case is really very puzzling. Oh yes? In what particular manner? <laughs> well, there's Mr. Drebber, Dr. Scythe, and Lord Van Zeeks. It seems that everybody in the trial has a link to the case somehow. Yes, in fact, I alone am not a member of the set. Though that leaves me as an empty set, all alone with no intersection to any other. Uh, excuse me. Oh, good. Just who I wanted to stare at. Da da, Doctor Scythe. Ah, Dr. Coltney Scythe, nay, Stevens. Good day to you. Devant, 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 devant. Lord Jones, that was very shrewd of you. What in particular, pray? You requested that ten-year-old autopsy report from Gregson, didn't you? Why would you assume such a thing? Because Gregson told me. To think it's been ten years. Ten years in the laboratory, fielding my scalpel. I smell of nothing but corpses and disinfectant. A policeman on the jury had a lot to say about you as it happens, Dr. Scythe. And I've accused you of being complicit in what happened. I'm hoping that you'll take the stand and tell the truth about what really happened. That certainly won't be possible. Hmm? Lord Van Zeeks won't be summoning me as a witness. Lord Strongheart has forbidden it. Lord Strongheart? The Pandora's box you've been warned about is the Professor case. But please don't make the mistake of thinking you'll get any information about it out of me. But attempting to hide from the truth, that's cowardice. I've always fought crime in the way I see fit. I have no regrets, none at all. And that's all I came here to say. So, good day to you. Wait, no, come back. Sit on my face. I mean, tell the truth. Coward. You guys didn't hear that. <laughs> she mentioned it too, this Pandora's box. Whatever does it all mean? There's really no cause for concern, I assure you, when the trial resumes. The meaning will become all too apparent whether you'd like it to or not. Huh? Now then, I believe it's almost time. 
I must make my way back to the public gallery. The edge of my seat awaits! I think maybe you're enjoying yourself a little too much. Ah, yes, one word of warning before I go. If, in the course of the trial this afternoon, you perceive even a shadow of doubt about the truth, don't let it out of your sight. Pursue it like a dog with a bone. To the bitter end, you understand. Do not falter, whatever may come to pass. I like Shrooms. He's a homie. Alright, I understand. Thank you. Good. I shall make myself scarce, then. I purchased a bar of caramel earlier, so I shall be gnawing on that as you gnaw away at the truth. Oh, it's the Shrooms one, where he copied the key. That was fun. Yeah. What did that warning from Mr. Sholmes really mean, I wonder? Especially the bit about whatever may come to pass. Violin, violin, by Olin. Oops, I punched my mic, sorry. It's time for the final chapter, then. I'm determined to find the truth. No matter what. Violin, in, violin. Twenty fourth, October, twelve forty PM, the old Bailey courtroom. They only have one courtroom. It's just the old Bailey, it seems. In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby reconvene the proceedings of this court. Wait. I don't know. Counsels for the defense and prosecution, are you ready and able to continue? The prosecution is ready, my lord. Ah, uh, yes, my lord, the defense is also ready. Sorry. <laughs> he looks like a nerd some. He looks like a like a dork sometimes. I have to do it. Uh, as the court is aware, the case under our scrutiny began with a damaging incident at the Great Exhibition. Yet we now find ourselves embroiled in the details of a convicted felon who was sent to the gallows a decade ago. This trial has certainly defied all expectation. As seems to be the fate of all trials in which this Nipponese is involved, my lord. So then. Let us begin our exploration of the defense's assertion that the waxwork was cardinally involved in this matter. Lord Van Zeeks. My lord. Are we still awaiting the arrival of Madame Tuspels? Not at all. She's in the antechamber as we speak, and ready to be summoned. Very well. Bring in the witness. At once, my lord. Bailiff, show Madame Tuspils to the stand. Things are about to become a lot more intense. You can tell it's going to become more intense because the camera just zoomed in on me and panned around in a way that it's never done before, so that's how you know it's about to become a lot more intense. If Drebber is responsible, as I'm sure he is, it means he must have had an accomplice in Dr. Scythe. And what connects the pair of them is the waxwork. Yes, the model of the professor. That's the key to the link between these otherwise unrelated individuals. It's a tenuous link, admittedly, but at present it's all we have to go on. Is that a Shomes? <laughs> That's great. State your name and occupation for the court, please. My name is Madame Esperalda Tuspils. I am a waxwork artisan. And the proprietress of the Madame Tuspils Museum of Waxwork. You will have to pardon me for working as I testify. My new exhibit must open very soon. Oh, so he finally gets a statue, does he? Now there are two of them in the world. Oh my, what expression is she carving onto that face? A number of days ago, a particular waxwork model was stolen from your museum. Can you confirm this? We, oui, that is true. At first, we believed it had been kidnapped. A waxwork model? Kidnapped? Yes, my lord. There was a demand for ransom money left behind by the culprit. However, according to what I have just been told outside the courtroom, that was not the true reason. I understand it was utilized as a substitute for the body of a murder victim. At present, that is no more than conjecture proposed by the defense. This is the victim of the case in question, Mr. Odie Assman. 
But of course, I know him well. He is a part of my odious personages exhibit. I detest to say what is evident, but Mr. Assman does not resemble the professor at all. Yes, but perhaps. Perhaps! That makes sense. Perhaps their faces are very similar. Are you suggesting that we should see now the damask visage? Va How do you. Visa is it visage or visage? I think it's visage. Visage. Is it visage? I think it's visage. The damask visage of the professor. I have here the key, but it is strictly forbidden to open the lock. This is absurd. Pardon? I don't know what face you've carved onto your fancy figure beneath that mask. But clearly it won't be that of the actual killer. Indeed. The man's identity was never made public after all. The trial took place in a closed court. The proceedings were strictly confidential. The condemned man was summarily executed. His identity remains a closely guarded national secret. There is no possible way that a repository of tawdry exhibits could get its hands on that information. Quel dommage. It would seem you are unaware of the Tuspel's principles. Uh, yeah, what principles? The family Tuspels has always prided itself on sculpting its models a la perfection. Every detail, including the visage, is fashioned with complete fidelity. Et voila our principles. There is a well-known... <clears throat> wow. There is a well-known legend about the Tuspels whackworks from the time of the French Revolution. A member of the Tuspels family is said to have made a waxwork of the queen who was executed. Oui, that is true. It was a century ago now. I believe the Queen's face was carved in the minutes following her death, actually at the guillotine site. You are correct. The model is on display still today in the House of Horrors. We Tuspels will stop at nothing to obtain a faithful replica of our subjects. Dear me, a somewhat disturbing tenacity of purpose. It is the only way to obtain a truly lifelike representation of the subject. And it has been my family's secret for generations. Do, do you mean to say that beneath that mask... We, oui. The true visage of the killer is there. This is ludicrous. It's out of the question. The professor spread terror throughout Great Britain. As a result, the Madame Tuspel special exhibit remains extremely popular, even today. The killer emerging from his own grave. It is a sight to behold. You should come. Well, not anymore. Yep. No more family secrets. I'm all, all out in court. That's what we should do with fucking KFC. Fucking put them in court, and then while they're under oath talking about something else, just be like, and what's the secret herbs and spices? You're under oath. You can't lie. <laughs> Sorry. I'm reminded of an episode of Parks and Rec where... Leslie Nope. I don't know if you guys even like that show, but I loved it. Uh, the first season was not great, but the rest following that was fantastic. Anyway, there's an episode where Leslie Nope throws a house party to impress uh, the guy she's dating. And um, some other shit happens, but at the same time, uh, she gets it on oath that he enjoyed the party. Because you can't lie under oath, so it's, just, it's, it's funny. It's just amusing. I think, madam, it would be beneficial to hear your formal testimony on this matter. You will explain every detail of this macabre model and your personal involvement in its creation. With pleasure. Witness testimony. The Professor Wax work. The special exhibit in the House of Horrors is based on a rumor that shocks society in London. An impression of the visage was taken directly from the corpse, in accordance with Tuspil's family principles. I enlisted the aid of the gravedigger and created a mold for the head in the cemetery just before the internment. I hid myself until he gave me a signal. I was there for a very long time that night. As dawn approached, I was very worried that I could be discovered. This was ten years ago. 
You're 26. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. 26! Ten years ago, you were 16 hiding to get a mold of the murderer's face. I guess, you know what, 16 back in those days was like... That's when you had your midlife crisis, so I guess that makes sense. Back in ye old Britain days, 26 is grandma, so... Oh, I see. Already testimony. Anyway. The grave digger. The man sanctioned this? We, oui. I will do all that is necessary to achieve the true resemblance my family is celebrated for. Which includes putting out. I mean, I didn't say that. She worked. She probably just paid him a lot of money. I wouldn't blame him, though. I, I'd hit. I'd hit this, too. I mean, Scythe is hot, but so is so is Tuspills here. I'll drink more water for you, Bryce. Mm. That is some high quality H two O. Nobody else knew. Only the Grave Digger. What harm did it do, huh? So you truly saw it—the face of that monster. Naturally, I was aware at the time that his identity was a secret. But Tuspels would not be Tuspels if we did not insist on absolute fidelity to our sculptures. I don't believe this. I myself have seen the special exhibit at your museum, madam. A truly blood-curdling scene in which the murderer is emerging from his own grave. The scene it depicts was the subject of many rumors in London ten years ago. I have here a newspaper from the time. Ah, uh, I see. I see it, Venom. I see it. A blonde wig? Oh, I have it. It's behind me somewhere. The special exhibit was based upon the picture in this article. It was the most detailed account of what happened as reported by the eyewitness who saw it. A ten-year-old article. Let me look at it. 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 Sorry. I'm just excited. Ooh, excuse me. Alright. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to keep going, but I'm going to put the wig on for the rest of the show for you guys. Last Halloween, my friend made me dress up as Fred from Scooby-Doo. And the wig was left over. I was like, you know what? Screw it. Make it a point redemption, you know? <laughs> it's not too bad. It just doesn't match the rest of my face hair at all. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's look at this article real quick. I don't know what that... But there's that signature. Um, and rises from the grave... What the fuck? Sorry, I'm reading the... I probably should read the article. Um, do Link this year? <laughs> Honestly, it's we're, we're almost at the end of September, and I still have no idea what the hell I'm going to be for Halloween, but I should probably figure it out soon. Link wouldn't be a good idea. Link wouldn't be a bad idea either. Because Link is... Like, I have... I have props I can use already. Like this. Because I'm a nerd, you know, I have to have a Master Sword, just in case. I also have Frostmourne and Shadowmourne in here, but I don't know if there's as many Warcraft fans, but yeah. I have a shield somewhere too, but I forgot where I put that. Oof. 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 Ah. Oh. Ah. There. Ah, whatever. That's fine. But thank you. I'm glad you like the wig, Venom. October is coming soon, yeah. I was thinking maybe getting like a jester outfit to match like the my jester cap that I put on occasionally. But we'll see. Um, hold on. Um The newly interred professor forced off his grave cover as he clawed free of the earth. The young man who witnessed the scene was on the verge of raising a shriek when, in the next second, a gunshot rang out suddenly from behind. 
The bullet pierced the resurrected man's chest, whose breath then stilled once more. The youth then finally released the scream he had been holding and ran for his life. Mad Sheep Rampage! Oh no! The Great Stink. Oh, that's funny. Anyway. Um, the Great Stink. Yeah, that was a, that's a good one. Um, so, there's Odie Asman's signature. I don't know why his signature is on it, though. But... So, according to the story, the professor was climbing out of his grave, and Enoch Drever was there to see it, but then shortly after, someone shot the resurrected professor from behind? No. From behind Enoch, I think. So, like, it was like, uh... Shooter, Enoch, Professor, and the guy shot the Professor from behind Enoch, it sounds like. I don't know. Pierced the resurrected man's chest whose breath then stilled once more. So whoever was climbing out of the grave was immediately killed right there. Odie Asman was involved somehow, as we know. Uh, Enoch Drever definitely involved, and probably why the camera we have in our inventory has blood on the side of it. Um, but right now, I don't know what to do with this, so we're going to continue. Man rises from the grave. It's too absurd for words. The public, en the public enjoy absurdity, Monsieur. That is why I have reproduced the scene as carefully as possible in my museum. And it's a waxwork from that exhibit that was stolen some days before the incident at the Great Exhibition, wasn't it? <clears throat> that is correct. The professor you see before you here. Mm. Most puzzling. <clears throat> Counsel for the defense, proceed with the cross-examination. This waxwork links Drever to Dr. Scythe. There has to be some reason for that, which hasn't yet come to light. Except for the, you know, autopsy of the body, and then Enoch Drever seeing the body go up. You actually held a Master Sword? Very... So have I. <laughs> but very cool. Very cool. It's always... Uh, like, the when people make, like, real replicas of, like, video game weapons, it's always so cool. And, like, I get that the foam stuff is cool, too, and, like, the PVC tubing. Like, you, you make do with what you can for an affordable price. And that's cool. Like, if, if it completes your outfit or your cosplay, awesome. But there's something different about, like, a solid metal keyblade or a solid metal gun blade or just, you know, an, a, like a real metal weapon from something you love. It's just really cool. All right, Benham, take a break. I'll be here. Well, I'm not sure how much longer I'll be here, but I'll be here. Um, and there has to be some reason for that, which hasn't yet come to light. But I'll find it. I'll get to the bottom of what really happened. I'll prove that Dr. Scythe and Drever were in on this crime together. Cross-examination, the Professor Waxwork. And that rumor would be? A ten-year-old tale now, but one that no Londoner would ever forget. All right, I know just what you're talking about, I think. There's his voice. I don't know if you guys enjoy Family Guy, but do you know Harrington Bottom Tooth? Like he's the one at the with the long jaw on the bottom, and he always like the. Fucking. That's who I should be like doing for this guy. All right, I know just what you're talking about. I think. Of course, of course, it couldn't be anything else. Yes, that story will never disappear. 
The tale of the condemned killer rising from the dead. That is the central attraction of my house of horrors. The rumor was whispered all over the city, and it was like this. It was in Lowgate Cemetery behind the prison, in the dead of night after the execution of the killer. The interred professor slid back the stone slab covering his tomb and emerged from his grave. A young man who witnessed this felt a scream welling up inside him. But an instant later, he heard an ear-splitting gunshot from over his shoulder. Okay, so I was right, over his shoulder. Okay. The bullet struck the emerging corpse, and he fell motionless once more. The scream finally found its way home from the mouth of the young witness, who turned and ran for his life. Why did he have a shovel? The, the corpse climbed out of his own grave? And then somebody shot him? Who, who was it? Nobody knows, even today. But remember, it was just a rumor. Perhaps nothing more than a ghost story. The good people of London, they love stories like this. That is why it was in every newspaper across the capital. But, but was it just a story? Can't we just ask the dude that was there? The one sitting right over there? One of the witnesses? I mean, this is exactly the scene that can be seen today at your museum, isn't it? We, oui. The special exhibit was modeled on that very illustration. For a while afterwards, the contents of that article were reproduced in every newspaper imaginable. Madam, might I say something? Please, go ahead, mademoiselle. When something is described as a rumor, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's entirely made up. I believe that often, rumors contain elements of the truth. Ah, I see that people from the East can be just as astute as the people of Europe. Can we be sure, for instance, that the professor's execution was successful? No, we can't, because it was done by Courtney Stevens. It is not possible for the dead to come back to life. Sorry? Did you say something completely obvious that I'm going to have you elaborate on? Anyway. Ten years ago, I was there in Lowgate Cemetery. After the criminal known as the Professor was killed by hanging. I took a wax impression of his visage from the corpse just before it was interred. So I can assure you, the man was dead. Okay, body was dead, but someone else was put in and then came out? Was it Odie Asman? I see. Hmm. It would certainly appear that the condemned man suffered the intended fate. Oh, sorry. Is, is that true of every waxwork in, you in your museum, then? Sorry, I'm, I'm losing my ability to talk. It's late. It is, assuming the subject is dead, of course. Live subjects have to cooperate in a similar way. I have letters from imprisoned criminals all the time, you know. What sort of letters? Oh, you know, the usual, like, please make me famous, or I want to hit that. Uh. When my time comes, please make a waxwork of me. Come as no. My museum is famous, Monsieur. To be made into a waxwork is an honor, and for some criminals, a symbol of status, even. Because nothing says hardened criminal better than wax. Get it? Hard wax? Ha <laughs> ha! It's funny. That was funny, Rinosuke. I liked it. And it is thanks to one killer in particular that my museum has gained such popularity in London. I refer to the star of the special exhibit, of course. The Professor. Whose form you claim to have captured by taking an impression from the actual corpse. There are no exceptions to the principles of Tuspels. And this is the end of the grave. Blah, 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 blah. Surely that's illegal, isn't it? 
It would seem the proprietress of this repository of novelties was blinded by monetary greed. It had nothing to do with money. The man is part of London's criminal history. That is why I had to sculpt him. To record this history. It is the raison... Ra it is the French word of the Tuspel's Museum. But if the man was convicted in a closed court and sent for immediate execution... And surely nobody but the members of the judiciary present know the killer's true identity. I assure you, behind that mask is hidden the true face of the professor. Do you realize what you're saying? The professor's identity is a national secret. I understand. And now that the truth about the special exhibit has been revealed, it must perhaps close. Of course it will, as will your entire museum if you don't tread carefully, madame. That could be another interesting chapter in the history of my family, I think, don't you? So ten years ago, on the night of the professor's execution, you took a wax impression of his face from the corpse. Oui, exactement. So they didn't talk about the gravedigger at all? during that for some reason, even though she said the gravedigger. The dude with the shovel, I would assume. Anyway. Hold it. You were there longer than you expected to be? I had some difficulties in capturing the subject's form correctly. As I removed the mask, the mouth of the cadaver fell open, and I had some problems with the chin. Dare I ask? The man had been dead for a short while already, you see. His muscles were relaxing, and consequently, his chin would not align itself correctly. Why'd the music change? Oh dear, what a horrible thought. Under normal circumstances, I would have an assistant with me. However, that night, I was alone. And as a consequence, I missed my preferred window of time. What do you mean? When I take the impression of the visage of a cadaver, I always wait until three hours after death. Why three hours? Is that amount of time significant? It is because of rigor mortis. Uh, Wrigley Mortis? It's the name given to a phenomenon that occurs in recently deceased bodies. As a rule, three hours post-death, the muscles in the body begin to stiffen. By approximately ten hours post-death, the entire body is completely rigid and inflexible. And then from that point on, the muscles slowly start to revert to their relaxed state. The effect is often used to estimate the time of death when a body is discovered. That book has everything fucking in it. Well, that was an education, if a slightly scary one. As the Mademoiselle says, rigor mortis commences three hours after death, and it starts in the jaw. I see. So that's why you wait. Before that time, the mouth falls open, and it is very difficult to do my work. Ugh, it's getting hard for me to do my work with all this talk of corpses. I wonder about that information the courts just heard from Madame Tuspells. It's significant. Why not? Um, the information about rigor mortis that you just shared with us, would you mind including it in your formal testimony? I believe it could be significant, you see. Of course, I do not mind at all. I can't help feeling that after this latest topic, the atmosphere in the courtroom has become extremely... grave. Thanks, Suzato. That's what we needed right now. At least your pun game's still on point. <laughs> this is no time for jokes, Miss Suzato. <laughs> Madam, kindly amend your testimony as discussed. Bien, sir. It took, me, it took me a very long time because it was before the onset of rigor mortis. Wait, what did this one say? Hold 
Let's press this two. Whatever. Push it two. Rigor mortis being the phenomenon you described, whereby the corpse becomes stiff after death. Giggity. I think you said that it starts at the jaw, about three hours post-death. Is that right? Oui, c'est ça. Of course, the exact duration depends a little on the season. I didn't realize a waxwork artisan would be so well-versed in the subject. No, no, that is only elementary knowledge in the field of legal medicine. Well, I had no idea about it, but maybe I won't admit to my ignorance about forensic science. Welcome back, Venom. You haven't missed much except for... Uh, another joke, another pun joke by Susato. Hmm, I could ask my father to give you a very simple primer if you like. I think corpses should be your domain. I'm not good with them. Oh dear. I'll do my very best. Oh, Suzato, I know you will. As Don approached, I was very worried that it was going You say that Don was approaching? What was the time of the day then? Approximately? Well, I could not say. But when I left the cemetery with my utensils and wax, the morning light was becoming visible. The execution took place on 17th June, which had the earliest sunrise of that year. Indeed it did. First light would have been at around 4.40 in the morning. How does he know that off the top of his head? That really is early. The fact is, I had very little time, so I finished my work in half an hour. In a half hour. Whatever. Same thing. It was necessary to complete the impression and bury the body before daybreak, of course. If somebody had discovered me there, it would have been a catastrophe, so I had to hurry. Is it me, or does Mr. Shome seem to be taking shape more quickly now, too? Hmm. You certainly appear to go to extraordinary lengths for your work, madam. I wonder, is what she just said particularly significant? Yes. I don't know, everything's significant. Madam, those details about how long it took you to complete the sculpture in the early sunrise. Could you include them in your testimony? I believe they may be significant. Of course, if you would like me to. You're quite right, Mr. Narahoto. It is intriguing. Whoops. I didn't do the voice right. Whatever. Moving on. A sunrise at four in the morning would be as absolutely unimaginable at home, wouldn't it? That's not quite what I meant by significant. Kindly amend your formal testimony then, madam. With pleasure, my lord. Dun 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 dun. I hurried to finish my work in the half hour before sunrise, then I left as soon as the corpse was interred? Why does that seem odd? Her timing seems off. If she took... If she took a mold of his face before he was interred and then only finished half an hour before sunrise did this all take place in that half hour before sunrise then? yeah oh as oh ass man there he is her timing or is it the other way around just something's not adding up about that shit that's all I'm saying right now Death by hanging confirmed at midnight, 17th June. So midnight is when he died. Sunrise was at 440. And Tuspells is saying she finished her work about 30 minutes before sunrise. So at 410. But she said she did it before he was interred, which means... The internment and subsequent coming back to life must have happened in that half hour, which doesn't seem accurate. But I'm not sure how I would prove that. Do I have anything else? No.
No, this is all I gotta work with right now. Alright, let's push this real quick. Did you have reason to believe you might be discovered once the sun came up or something? I had paid the Gravedigger money to keep my little secret, of course. But with the morning light, I knew that the warden from the prison would commence his patrol of the area. Couldn't you just have paid off the warden too, then? I had already paid the Gravedigger, as I said. You cannot buy the silence of everyone, or the secret is no longer a secret. The sunrise was at 4.40 a.m. that day, which means that it would have been around 4 when you began your sculpting work. Oui, that must be correct. That would be when the Gravedigger gave me the signal to come out of hiding. So that's all I have to go on. What's your feeling, Mr. Naruhoto? For some reason, Dr. Scythe went along with Drebber's plan. Now, if that's really true, then the Professor is the only other thing we know of that links the pair of them. So I feel sure that Waxwork must be a clue to this mystery somehow. In that case, we must use this cross-examination to uncover exactly what that means. Otherwise, the jurors are sure to revert their leanings, and the trial will be over. I agree, but interestingly, uncovering what the Professor has to do with all of this means more to Lord Van Zeeks than anyone. That's the impression I'm getting, anyway. Yes, as do I. <coughs> oh, God. After all, he has a profound connection to the Professor as well. Alright. Alright, alright, alright. Do I still have the rigor mortis comment? She said... Something seems off about this. Because she was saying rigor mortis takes about three hours to start, you know, happening. But she said that she was having trouble with it. Since you're oh yeah, no, it's... I keep choking on my spit, but choking on water, a lot, a lot better, I'm sure. Thank you, Venom. Thank you, appreciate that. Um... But anyway, um, said the autopsy report said death was at midnight, but she said it took her a while to finish her work because it was before the onset of rigor mortis. So if the death was really at midnight, rigor mortis should have started at three, but she, if that was... If that was the case, she would have been working with it while it was under rigor mortis, so... Something tells me the professor didn't die at midnight. At least that's what I'm gonna go with. But I'm not sure what the hell I would present to prove that. Like, do I present the autopsy report then? Because it says midnight. Ah, fuck it. Let's see. Objection. Fuck yeah, let's go. Madam Tuspills. I have here an autopsy report that was filed ten years ago now. It confirms the death of the professor following his execution at the gallows. And, is that a problem? I believe it is, because your testimony and a particular detail in the report completely contradict one another. Qua? Are you going to explain yourself, my Nipponese friend? According to her testimony, Madame Tuspells was creating her wax impression just before dawn. And at that time, rigor mortis had not yet set in. Am I correct so far, madam? You are, yes. As I said, the stiffening of the jaw is the first sign of rigor mortis, two or three hours after death. But the man's chin was limp, so he cannot have been dead for a long time. But on the other hand, if you look at Dr. Scythe's report, it quite clearly states the following. Death by hanging confirmed at midnight, 17th June. No. If the professor indeed died at midnight that day, then by the time you were sculpting his face, rigor mortis would already have set in. We, oui, yes, you are right. 
the chin, it would have been completely stiff. <laughs> stiff. Anyway. In other words, this report is wrong. Objection. No coroner makes mistakes when recording the time of death. The very idea is absurd. In that case, there's only one possible conclusion. The execution didn't actually take place at the stated time. Impossible! Order, order! Council, this is beyond folly. Not only do you indict the author of the report, Dr. Scythe, but you also implicate members of staff at Barclay Prison where the execution took place. I can't talk that fast. Okay, cool. My learned friend appears to have overlooked one very crucial fact. What fact? The professor died that night, without question. He did. Of course he did. I moved the man's limp jaw with my own hands. Objection. There was no... Yes, the professor died that night. But what if he didn't die at the gallows? Didn't die at... Are you insane? What... What exactly are you suggesting did happen in that case? It's almost impossible to believe, but it would explain the link between Dr. Scythe, the professor, and that one other person of interest. I have evidence that will explain exactly what I'm suggesting happened that night. Council, present the evidence at once. The evidence that allegedly explains what really happened on the night of the professor's execution. Uh, there's one thing I want to present, but I'm not sure if it's right. So we're going to save, because, you know, that's what we do. Let's go ahead and go back, and let's... I want to present this camera. Because the exhibit had Enoch Drebber there with the camera... And a shovel. But then... I'm starting to think maybe Odie Asman or Enoch Drebber, most likely Enoch, was there to... S save the professor after Dr. Scythe pretended that he died. And then someone shot the professor after, as he was getting out of his grave and actually killed him. Which is when What's-Her-Face eventually, you know, went to the body, copied it. I don't know. But I think this camera might be the thing to do. Just thinking if there's anything else. Is it this article? Yeah, because he has the shovel in it, too. Eh, I can present both, I guess. I mean, I saved it, because I'm a bitch, so... I'm not going to get anywhere not doing anything, so... I'm going to do the article. Take that. Oh. Okay, cool. What happened that night is written very plainly in this newspaper article. Executed criminal returns in the dead of night at local cemetery. You're suggesting it was a corpse coming back from the dead now? Well, if this article is to be believed, yes. The professor, assumed dead following his execution, emerged from his grave and was killed again. Objection. Don't be a fool. That's simply a rumor published by the gutter press. Can you be certain of that? Are you serious? The point is, as the article says, there was a witness to what happened. 
My word, yes indeed. My we, the young man who stole into the cemetery by chance that night. Objection! Of course there was a witness. The story didn't write itself, but obviously the man made it all up. And in any case, this was ten years ago now. There would surely be no hope of finding him. Objection. He's right fuck it there! On the contrary, my lord, we all know this witness well. What? Are you suggesting, Council, that you've identified the person in question? That you know who claims to have seen these utterly incredible events take place? Yes, my lord. In fact, you can say that he's right here, before my very eyes. Oh, this part. It's the article since it was talking about what happened. If this delay... My phone's fault. I got it. Uh, I figured it out. But, um... Yeah, no, that's good. But if you want to help me out in the future, um, if you want to, like, instead of, like, saying the answer, because I'm sure you know the answer. You watched Norman do this. Uh, if you want to just push me in the right direction with, like, vague hints, that would be much appreciated, sir. You will substantiate your latest claim now, then, Council. Who is the alleged witness of this staggering scene from the cemetery ten years ago? Uh... This dude. Take that! The man in question is Mr. Enoch Drebber. Drebber? The, the previous witness! The special exhibit in the House of Horrors at Madame Tuspell's Museum of Waxwork recreates that decade-old scene in great detail. The condemned criminal emerging from the grave, and beside the tomb, a young man with a lantern stumbling upon the terrifying sight. And that young man is a ten-year younger Mr. Enoch Drebber. Oh, sure, sure, my apologies. I have played this game. Alright, that's cool. No, no need for apologies, it's fine, I get it. Just a little more vagueness with your hints, and we're good. <laughs> that's all. I just appreciate the help at all, because God knows I'd probably have to have a walkthrough for when I just say, fuck it, I give up. <laughs> order, order! Surely not, Council. Drebber was there, in Lowgate Cemetery. Um, what is all this talk about Mr. Drebber? Is the name significant? Of course, Madame Tuspell doesn't know, does she? Yes, it's extremely significant, madam. To your situation as well, in fact. What situation? The theft of the Professor Waxwork from your museum some days ago was perpetrated by the very same man. No! But, but that would mean... Madam Tuspells. It would appear you know the name Enoch Drebber. Yes, I know it. But from long ago in the past. What? Oh my! Good gracious! Explain yourself. Tell us everything you know. Yes, yes, of course. <laughs> nice shirt. Watch Doctor Who. Uh, I have it in a while, which is unfortunate because I need to get caught up again. But yeah, I've watched uh, I've watched the 9th, the 10th, the 11th, and most of the 12th. Um, I haven't started the 13th yet, even though I really want to. Um, and then I know they're about to come out with the 14th, so I gotta get caught up again. I also want to rewatch it all again because it's all great, but I need to get caught up. But yes, I do have my Dalek shirt. It was my favorite shirt because it's also like super soft. But it's got a hole in the back now, so now it's just a pajama shirt, you know? Unfortunate, but it happens. Do you guys watch it? Do you have, like, a favorite doctor? Like, which one's your favorite? Um, anyway. Uh, the story of the young man and the terrible sight he witnessed in the cemetery ten years ago was published in every single newspaper in London and then and throughout Great Britain. 
Oh, I guess if I'm going to ask you who's your favorite, I should tell you mine. My favorite, it's David Tennant. It's got to be David Tennant. He, he is my favorite. He did such a good job. Um, and then I think contrary to a lot of people, uh, my second favorite is uh, Peter Capaldi, number 12. Because I just, I loved his like no-nonsense attitude. Like, David Tennant had some silliness, and then Matt Smith had even more silliness. He, Matt Smith was still good, but he had, like, more silliness. And then Peter Capaldi comes in, and he's just, like, no nonsense. He, he did have some nonsense. Not, uh, like, playing guitar on top of a tank in medieval times. Like, nonsense, obviously, but, like, he was a lot more stern, you know? I just, I really liked him, so. But David Tennant, hands down. Least favorite, uh, from the ones I've seen, Christopher Eccleston, man. Christopher Eccleston, I don't know. I might be biased, but maybe just because I didn't like Rose. I, like, Rose broke the rules so many times, and I am surprised she didn't get kicked out of the TARDIS. Like, ugh. But yeah. I didn't like Christopher Eccleston as much as the other ones, but I blame Rose mostly for that. Um, so yeah, David Tennant, Peter Capaldi, Matt Smith, all great. Um, the late John Hurt as, you know, the War Doctor, he was great. Um, and I need to watch, you know, Jodie Whittaker, because um, she's a great actress, so I'm curious to see how she did. <gasps> However... In all of the articles, the witness was simply described as a certain young man. No details were published about his identity. His name was never revealed. That is, apart from in one newspaper. The Daily Circus. It is the paper from which comes the article I have already shown the court. You're saying that his full name was only publicized in that article? Goodness me, yes, here it is. The university student who experienced this shocking event is Mr. Enoch Drebber, a disciple of science at the University of London and a resident of its student dorms. Unbelievable. Why are you surprised? You just said who it was. When I read the article, I went to meet with the man. His discovery of the condemned criminal coming back to life in the cemetery in the dead of night would make a perfect exhibit for my House of Horrors, whether it was the truth or not. I see. So you went to meet Mr. Drebber in order to sculpt a waxwork of the man, did you? Exactement. He was studying science at the University of London in those days. He was just a poor student. I paid him five pounds to model for the waxwork. And since that time, it has been in my museum to recreate the scene of terror from the cemetery. We all knew it was Enoch, didn't we? Like, I, I don't feel like that's a big reveal. I could be wrong, though. I don't know. What do I know? I'm just a silly Japanese lawyer. So ten years ago, a young man appealed to the public about an extraordinary event he'd witnessed. A criminal who had been put to death, re-emerging from his grave in the middle of the night. But the public treated his claim as nothing more than an amusing anecdote that was soon forgotten. Ten years later... The same man steals a waxwork model of the ex executed criminal, ostensibly to use as a body double for the victim in the case we're discussing here today. Even though the waxwork's build is a poor match for the victim, and its face is obscured by a mask. So the question is, why would the man do such a thing? Which brings us to three days ago, when the birdcage crashed into the crystal tower. Wow, I almost fucked that up. If the birdcage had in fact contained not the body of Mr. Assman, but that same waxwork, the coroner from Scotland Yard who investigated, Dr. Scythe, would have noticed immediately. And yet, she submitted this autopsy report for the victim, which the court has seen earlier. Why? Because the waxwork was that of the professor, is that what you're saying? Dr. Scythe put her name to a document confirming the death of a condemned criminal who was still alive. 
a criminal whose apparent resurrection was witnessed by Mr. Drebber. But that misconduct was a deadly secret the coroner would do anything to protect. Which is precisely why Mr. Drebber used that particular waxwork as the body double. Yeah, I'm not doing the yelling. <laughs> I mean, the newspaper clearly is Drebber, but this is Ace Attorney. But I thought we learned it was Drebber at the museum. I thought everyone that went to the museum was learning it was Drebber. Right? Yeah. My lord, this court must summon Dr. Scythe to the stand. The defense is determined to find out exactly how the coroner and Mr. Drebber are connected. But according to the missive I received this morning through the prosecutor's office, Dr. Scythe is unable to participate in these proceedings. Is that not the case? She told us so herself, didn't she? Lord Van Zeeks won't be summoning me as a witness. Lord Strongheart has forbidden it. Lord Strongheart? The Pandora's box you were warned about is the Professor case. But please don't make the mistake of thinking you'll get any information out about it out of me. Something happened on the night of that killer's execution ten years ago, and surely nobody would want to get to the bottom of that more than Lord Van Zeeks. The prosecution calls for the instructions in that missive to be scrapped. There we go, Van Zeek. Let's go. But, but Lord Van Zeeks, the missive was issued from the Lord Chief Justice's office. Objection. The assigned prosecutor has the final say on policy in any particular trial. In other words, me. Yes. Let Enoch Drebber and Dr. Scythe both take the stand together. Ooh, I got chills. <laughs> order, order. Very well, I will uphold your request. Bailiff, send a subpoena with immediate effect addressed to Dr. Scythe of the Forensic Investigation Team. The woman is compelled to attend on Her Majesty's orders. Alright then, Enoch Drebber and Dr. Scythe. If they weren't colluding with one another, this crime could never have been committed. I'm just a stone's throw away. I can feel it. The truth behind all of this is about to come out. Oh, Madame, Madame Tuspel's here too. Okay. Still carving away at Sholmes. Thank you for your attendance at such short notice, Dr. Scythe. I'm disappointed in you, Zolt Van Zeeks. You've completely betrayed the agreed policy of both Scotland Yard and the Prosecutor's Office. Betrayal is not in my nature as long as the truth isn't compromised. If it is, if there's even a hint of wrongdoing, then no matter whom it concerns or disgruntles, I will pursue the matter to the bitter end, as would any prosecutor with his salt. Mr. Drebber? You took the victim's life by means of a machine that you constructed in your workshop. And Dr. Scythe, as the investigating coroner, you were the first on the scene to examine the victim's body. It is the belief of the defense that you collaborated with each other and were both complicit in this crime. And fails your evidence. At present, we have no definitive evidence, but... We do have a very significant clue. What are you talking about? I'm talking, of course, about the waxwork. This model of the killer known as the Professor, who was sentenced to death ten years ago. You don't need to tell me. I witnessed the man's execution with my own eyes, and officially pronounced him dead. That remains to be seen. Is that so? According to newspaper reports from the time, on the night following his execution, the killer came back to life. Don't waste my time. And the sole witness to that mysterious event was you, Mr. Drebber, wasn't it? 
If what you saw in the graveyard that night ten years ago wasn't some chilling fiction but reality, it would make you privy to a very great secret of Dr. Scythe's. A secret so profound, it could compel the coroner to agree to collaborate in your evil scheme, in fact. Mr. Drebber, tell the court. Tell everyone the truth of what you saw that night in Lowgate Cemetery. So he was the student who saw it. You can see the resemblance, actually, can't you? With the man and Madame Tuspells, I mean? Surely he's not going to claim that it's really what he saw, especially not after all these years. He was a research student at the University of London, was he? And a bit too clever for his own good, if you ask me. <laughs> what an interesting twist. When at the time, not one person would take me seriously. Yet now here we are, ten years later, and suddenly my story matters, and in a court of law, too. Very well, then. If everyone so wishes. Let's be frank. I'll tell you the truth of what happened that night, for what it's worth. Something tells me we're about to get lied to. So, Mr. Drebber, your testimony, please, about the events of that night ten years ago. You will tell the court exactly what you stumbled across in Lowgate Cemetery. Yes, of course, as you wish. Witness testimony! In the cemetery ten years earlier... I was not expecting that many words. I had to fit it in real fast. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm going to stop here, which is unfortunate because I really want to keep going. And I'm excited to learn what the hell's going on 10 years ago in this cemetery. But right now feels like a great place to stop because not only is it almost one o'clock my time, but it is an hour past my bedtime. And I got to wake up for work in about seven hours. So I have to leave it here, even though I don't want to. So. Oh, let's go options, let's save, throw one more save down right here. Alright, so, um, yeah, let me see if there's anyone on I can raid real quick. I wonder if Drew's still, he's still playing. Drew is playing Breath of Fire. Mono's playing The Last of Us. I should probably bother Mono. It's been a while since I've raided him. And he's playing The Last of Us, which a lot of people like, so... I don't know. Maybe you guys will enjoy that. Uh, yeah. Mono Nani. Yeah, we're gonna raid him. Slash raid Mono Nani. Beautiful. Okay. Um. So, yeah. So, this is the end of this. We're gonna raid Mono. Mono, uh, cool guy. Um... Playing Last of Us, I don't know what grounded difficulty is. I think that might be like the super hard one, but if you're into that, stick around and watch. If not, go ahead, take off. Have a great night. Uh, quick shout outs to um, all my chatters, everyone who stuck around and made it awesome uh, Bryce, Venom, uh, Maple, Mochi, uh, God, there's a lot. Fern, absolutely Fern as well. Um, I'm, I'm going to forget people and I'm going to feel bad, but I just want you all to know that if I forgot you, you're you're still in my heart because I love you all. I love the support. I love hanging out. Um, see you tomorrow or maybe soon. Um, I'm going to try. I want to try to stream every day this week, but it really depends on how busy my work's going to get. If it picks up too much, I have to work late and then I'm not sure if I'm even going to have time to stream, but I'm going to give it a shot. Um, I definitely want to start a new game that's not a visual novel tomorrow if I get the chance. Um, but, uh, but yeah, if not, um, Wednesday, maybe Thursdays, uh, at the very latest, I'm going to be doing more Ocarina of Time Rando on Friday with Funky and Morrow. So you can always catch me then too. But until then, uh, take care of yourselves, stay healthy, stay hydrated. And I look forward to our next chance to hang out and chat and play games. So take care guys. Have a good night.